Two, Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. Neil, good. Call Neil, call 567 0560, toll free oh my God. in Broward, or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast. Damn it. Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. I want to bang. In the butt, honey. Free drugs. Tonight I have free drugs. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. Tool, tool, hard on. Take it. Bus. The longest tool. The highest tool. The smallest tool. My fellow Americans, I stand before you tonight. Hard on. Growing. Hard on. Expanding. Hard on. Rising. I reach out my tool to all of you. A rock solid. Hard on. Hard on. Free drugs. Tonight I have free drugs. To to part I'll take it. To to part I'll take it. And ask that we join together in saying to the American people, take it. So Tom Zicka says. No, seriously, do you have any idea what a thrill this is? I mean, uh, open up the TV book, which nobody reads. What a tremendous thrill this is. At least he's on my side, that good bald-headed Tom Zicker. Have I ever said anything bad about him? No. Other than he's bald and a geek and sometimes don't write about the ratings enough. Good guy, my good buddy Tom Zicker, who never stole a freight train. Right there in in, uh, this week's Sun Sentinel, which it's a good thing, by the way, I did open up yesterday's Sun Sentinel a little bit when I got home last night. Because this morning, Sun Sentinel is as soggy as a river rat. Huh? It was just, uh, you know, you open up the plastic and it's just uh, waterlogged crap. In fact, it looks, every time that happens, it looks like it's reforming back into a tree again, you know? Like the paper is kind of like tracing its life backward. Tom Jicka says to a letter writer, do we have anybody in Plantation that likes this show? No. Have we ever had a call from Plantation, anybody that enjoys this show? No. They hate me in Plantation. And it's interesting, by the way, the arena is in Sunrise, close to Plantation, but officially in Sunrise. The uh, Publix, that's Sunrise, right? Even though it's on that other side of the street, I'm pretty sure that's still Sunrise, the Sawgrass Publix. You bet your sweet ass it is. That's Sunrise. So I'm big in Sunrise, gigantic in Miami International Airport, but in the Plantation, not too big. So here's this uh, letter to the editor. Oh, by the way, Mel Torme died. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Beep, bop, boop, bop, bleep, 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 bleep. We're not going to be hearing that no more. You know, leave it to the Herald. You know, you people at the Herald are such a bunch of assholes, really. You, you're just unbelievable. Mel Torme was on the front page, no less. Do you think Mel Torme dying should be on the front page? No. No. Huh? I mean, he was very well known. He was fat. He was, uh, you know... The Velvet Frog, which I didn't know he was Canadian, which I got a fax from Montreal, by the way. Boy, we got a lot of stuff here for Monday, I'll tell you, and thank God for that. So anyway, it's on the front page of the paper. It says, Mel Torme, who wrote Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. I hate to break the news to you. In fact, in, in the same article, if you take the effort to open up to the inside page, which nobody does, it says the Christmas song. That's the name of the song. He didn't write, I mean, that's part of, that's the most famous lyric from the song, but that's not the name of the song, you idiots, you. You know, I'm I'm speechless. It's so typical, and the people here are like, well, yeah, that's the name of the song. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Yeah, that's it. Like that Richie from New York that was just on there again with the worst team. Everything bad from New York has come here. It's like a disease. There are 10 million good New Yorkers. They're all still up there. Every disease, every piece of dreck, if you pardon that expression. Right, Todd? Every piece of sewage, instead of sticking it in the Hudson River, they sent it down here, including Richie with that loud mouth with the bagel boys. Oh, geez. See, I'm digressing now. So anyway, yesterday morning on the, uh, I think it was on the, uh, what's that show that, I don't know what the name of it is. Charles Corral used to do it, and now um, what's his name does? The news guy, Charles Osgood. Oh, come on. Sunday CBS Sunday Morning, is that the name of the show? And at the end, they usually have, like, uh, all these American scenic, uh, you know, with the sound of waterfalls, pishing, and birds singing. That's always at the end of that show. CBS Sunday Morning, I think. So instead of that yesterday, I just caught the ass end of it, just as the closing credits were going off, and they had the music of Mel Torme, because after all, he just died. 
And since basically that show is, appeals to pseudo-intellectuals anyway, and Mel Torme and all that jazz business is definitely a pseudo-intellectual thing, huh? Right? It's, it's music for pseudo-intellectuals. Those are the people who listen to Love 94. See, the real intellectuals, they listen to TMI. All three of them. But the pseudo-intellectuals, they listen to jazz on Love 94. It's unmusic. So they were playing, and, and he I forget what song he was singing, and very butchered. And then he get, get just about five seconds into it, and then he went off, like, you know, like that. It's not like that OJ thing that I play. Yeah, it's not like that. Oh, yeah, it's not just like that. And I thought to myself, oh, my God. And by the way, he was 73 years old, had a stroke three and a half years ago, and guess what? What did Mel Torme have in common with all these other people who are dying? He was fat. He was a big Fat tub of lard. He lost some weight there once. I remember one time he looked uh, almost human, and then he just ballooned up again like Defoe is doing right now. I come in this morning. I see Defoe there in the out-of-control room, hanging out, literally. He's got a puppet hanging out. I'm going to tell you, he has passed me. I walked in there. I said, mister, you have passed me. And he looked down, couldn't see his shoes. And then he took his cap off and he bent down. He's got a bald spot as big as I do. He says, well, I've always admired you so much. I want to be just like you. He's fatter than I am. See, and, and not only is he, see, my fat is all in this one place, this roll. I have this roll and that's it. If I get rid of that roll, I wouldn't be so fat. But I can't get rid of it. But nevertheless, but he, it's like from the neck down, is getting fat. You know what I'm saying? And he's rationalizing it. He's saying, oh, well, you know, all us Jews, we all, uh, you know, middle age. That's a rationalization, mister. You're getting fat. You're going to die. Here on your fat station for the 90s. This is the fattest freaking place I have ever worked in my life. When he was at IOD, was he fat? No. Never. Never. Never even close. Was he chubby? No. No. He was slim. He was, uh, you know, he was a guy. You've seen him on television on those 85 different shows he does. Was he ever fat? No. Comes to this station, all of a sudden he's <laughs> porking up like a cow. Enormous, gigantic, huge. The fat people, just like Don DeLuise said in that movie, in Fatso. The good people are the fat people, and the fat people are... Oy. The dead people. Just keep that in mind, okay? All you chubbies out there, all you people that are trying to rationalize. I'm not going to get on my soapbox again. Far be it for me to talk about big fat cows. Huh? Nothing worse than a fatso like me talking about other people being real, real, real fat. Gigantic, huge. Like Boog Shami that we tried to get in here to get through that way off thing so that we could settle that office pool. The only problem was we don't have a meat scale. Where do they have those? Don't they have the one at Publix? Doesn't that go up to like 800 pounds? Where do they have those? Huh? You know the ones I'm talking about where they weigh like a side of beef on it. We could go over to Penn Dutch. Hey, yeah, we could take him over to Penn Dutch and hang him by a meat hook. The Boogster. <laughs> wow. Haven't seen him in a while. Can you imagine... When's the last time we saw him? About four months ago? He was downstairs on the second floor. By now, he may not, be, may not even be able to get him on the elevator down, uh, downstairs. Maybe that's why he hasn't entered the building. Maybe he can't get into the building. And some people think, oh, well, that's really insensitive. This. No, it's not. You try to save people from choking on their own fat, from this disease, from this illness, like Jeff the florist. Let's find out what kind of flowers he likes, by the way. Because you mark my words, and I don't, I don't take this lightly. I, I wish him only the best. I really mean that. But he is going to be, we're going to be putting him in the ground. I, I can smell it. You can feel it. You can sense it. Seldom I've ever seen anybody go from slim to enormous to, to gigantic to roly-poly in such a short time. I think last time I saw that was after Al lost all that weight, Goldstein. Remember he lost all that weight for about five minutes? And he went from like, I don't know, what, 250 to like 450, like overnight. He just had a bad night, and all of a sudden he woke up the next morning and <laughs> meat scale. I'll get back to Tom Jacob, believe me. 
10 past, and all our good friends in Plantation. 10 past 10 at 560 WQM. Here's the that the Lord even loves Neil Rogers. Ever wonder what happened to the British supergroup Oasis? Yes. Lots of people thought they'd finally run out of ways to rip off the Beatles. Not even close. Oasis is back with a new CD that's like nothing you've never heard before. It's Oasis. Don't let it be. Be united. Oasis, Don't Let It Be, gives you a chance to listen over and over again to incredibly original songs like this. I'd like to be beneath the surface of the ocean, yeah. in eight on the sea creatures, cultivation patch with you. Oasis, Don't Let It Be, will move you. It will astound you. It will make John Lennon spin in his grave. And at the conclusion, And look for Noel Gallagher's new solo LP, Abbey Highway, on Snapple Records. All right, unless we hear them, the happier we'll all be. Oh! So anybody think Mel Torme belonged on the front uh, page, his death? No. Of the Herald or any other newspaper? See, one thing they don't understand is that uh, time is kind of passing them by. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like time is passing them by at the Herald. Mel Torme, like only old farts. Remember Mel Torme, and that's number one. And number two, uh, most of us old farts didn't like him in the first place. And his chestnuts roasting on a goddamn open fire, okay? We're already sick of those, uh, those old chestnuts, okay? They're rotten. You can smell them from a million miles away already. Take your chestnuts, stick them in a box, and have a great uh, sleep, okay? Have a great dirt nap, Mel Torme. Go away. He was fat. He was a good guy, you know, I guess. I guess. Although his good friend was Jerry Lewis, so it couldn't have been too good. So Tom Jicka says, I'll get to this. He's bad, he's stupid! Yeah, but he's my good buddy Tom. By the way, that picture, Tom, I mean, I know we're all getting a little bit older, and I have seen you not that long ago, but that picture, that's bad. I'd sue the Sun Sentinel. Before you get your last check, I would sue their ass for that picture. Anyway, a question. These are, this is on the uh, question and answer page that Tom Jicka, every, about every uh, six weeks, gets my name in there somehow. And thank God for you, Tom. You're the only guy left in this town. That'll put my name in the paper. Not that it does any good, but nevertheless, can't hurt. That Terry Jackson asshole. Well, I guess he's supposed to be the TV writer over there at the Herald. Remember he wrote on the whammy thing and about how embarrassing that station was and how great it was that I finally got off of there? And by the way, everybody and their brother, the people that still come up, everybody that I talked to saw the show on whammy. Everybody. I'm at the airport in Toronto last night at Pearson International Airport, and there's a bunch of kids and, uh, you know, some adults, uh, the coaches or whatever, kid the hockey team about 12 13 year old kids they watch the show on whammy i mean they're in like most of the time they're in school when the show is on during the daytime but they know me from whammy how do you like that i'm at the airport going up friday night and there's uh, a couple of the porters work there in the airport big fans of mine what happened to that tv show god we sure missed that no we don't we don't miss the fat joe well you don't see you know, I was thinking this the other day before I get back to Tom Jicker. You watch how long it takes me to milk this thing. No, I was thinking, well, it's Monday. I've got a whole new tactic for Monday. But I was thinking the other day, all these people that you have problems with, and then I take the fallout like I'm a miserable son of a bitch. I'm a nice guy. You're a prick, okay? Look at these people. There is an example, Fat Joe. Yeah. Now, I realize that he was in there with you farting and belching and puking and uh, being obnoxious and sticking the joint out. He was a very nice guy. But very obnoxious. Yeah. And wouldn't keep his mouth He was shut. fat. And yeah. Sure he still is fat. Nice guy. Love to party with the guy. Yeah. But as far as having him in your room yakking all day long. No. But we miss Ron. Yes, Ron was a good guy. Ron was a good guy. He was quiet. He wasn't a ba ba No, he was quiet. He went about his business, did his job. I miss Rob's fiance. I miss Stephanie Lips. Mmm. Rob. I don't know. Rob. Rob is a good guy, you know, but just uh, a little too silly for me. You know what I'm saying? Kind of a silly Hi, guy. Hi, I'm lips. Yeah, I got your lips right over here, sweetheart. Well, that was for Rob. And Miss David Suarez, he was a good guy. He didn't know. He wasn't a uh, uh, yenta. Pop, 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 you know, like that. We miss Danny's feet from Whammy. Danny from Whammy. And that's it. You know, it was it had its moments, but uh, this listening audience, they didn't want anything to do with that show. They didn't want any part of it. They already heard it the first time, which goes to prove what I said about those uh, those tapes. 
Nobody wants to hear it a second time, okay? They can repeat it by rote. They can repeat it uh, chapter and verse. There's nothing like hearing somebody talking about a ball game that happened six months ago. That's timely. It's crap is what it is. But the whammy thing was just, uh, I don't know, if it would have been on a real station with people that really knew what they were doing and not Matty Lesham, that could have been uh, could have gone over. And if we could add a few brawls, a few fist fights, what we needed on that show were naked people and fist fights. That's what we needed. That's the secret for success. And maybe, you know, like in the background, pictures of plane crashes, stuff like that. That's what you have to have, sex and violence, violence and sex. Then it might have gone over. Because who the hell wanted to see some old fat Jew with a yarmulke on every night for half an hour? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, Tom Jicka says, well, first here's the letter, and again, it's from Plantation. Maybe today we'll have a call from Plantation from somebody who likes the show. You think so? No. No. They hate me in Plantation. Like poison. Maybe because I've lived there for the last, uh, how long have I lived there? Seven and a half, nine, over ten years. Long time. Oh, but wait a minute. See, I, I, I'm digressing. I'm all over the place. It's not only Fat Joe, but it's like uh, Bob McKay. I only saw the man my once. Best in my, I saw the man from uh, from Kiss, program director of our sister country nose pick and K. He came in downstairs on the second floor. His hairpiece fell off and he ran out. I saw him for like five seconds one day. It's the only time I ever saw the man. You tell me he's an asshole. I think he's, he's a, a nice great guy. guy. We just had a little wrinkle one day. Yeah, and who else is in that category? There's somebody else that you hate like poison. That uh, I don't even know. I don't know. Remember? Uh, well, there was a whole series of names that came to mind. I was thinking about it on a plane last night, which goes to show you what a boring trip I must have been coming back. And you want to know why it was boring? Because I was coming back here. Oh, God. You know, people ask me, why you're, you're always running on the way to Las Vegas last weekend, Toronto this weekend, and you want to know why I have such a great play, time being in all these places? Because I'm not here. Yeah, but what do you do there? What, whoever I can. But I have a great time because I'm not here. Just even if I just sat in a hotel and looked out the window and opened up the window and smelled the stale air. Oh, boy, it was hot up there yesterday. It was 89 and real humid. It made me realize, you know, you know when it's great up north, like in the spring and in the fall. But in the summertime, man, the humidity, it's unbelievable. All these snowbirds that go schlepping back up there. What's the big picnic up there in June and July and August, huh? 89 degrees. It felt like 109 and today, I'm watching CBC this morning. She said it's going to be 32 in Toronto and feel like 41. That's Celsius. 32 is what, like uh, 93, something like that? Well, now, what is that? You don't know what that means? I don't have my conversion chart on me. Well, 24 is 75. Right. 20 is 68. Come on, get with it. I can't do math. It, it, you know, it, it isn't a question of doing math. It's a question of knowing the numbers on the scale. There's not a mathematical progression. I don't go to Canada that Zero, much. Zero, why not? To make those conclusions. Yeah, you're too pasty to be going up there. They don't like Cubans up there that much. Now, they ha they have like a, uh, a spick town up there in uh, Toronto. About two blocks. Yeah. About two blocks. Now, I think that's enough, to be JP honest. JP says uh, Canada sucks. Why is that? Have you ever been there? To Toronto? And you thought it sucked? Based on what? Oh, that's right. They don't like Cubans. Well, what didn't you like about it? What is there? What could anybody possibly not like? What? That it's too clean. Oh, it's too clean. That's right. He grew up here. He likes the schmutz. He likes filth. He likes, uh, you know, wallowing in sewage up to his armpits. Great. Then uh, you're in the perfect spot for it. Too clean. Too antiseptic. The subway runs on time. It works too good. You can get all around the city. No problem at all. People are friendly. They speak to you. The American dollar's worth. Oh, by the way, can I talk about the uh, change guy there? I better not do this because I, you know, I keep making all these famous celebrities out of people who aren't celebrities. There's a change place up there. There's a young guy. There's a family that runs the series. And being a world class city like it is, all over downtown, there's places to exchange currency. Unlike Miami, which only at the airport, which is a major ripoff, is there any place else? Can the Sawgrass and the airport? Is there any place else that you can tell me where they change currency in this town? No. So that shows you right there. It's not a world class city. But anyway, so there's a family that uh, this is their business, is these currency exchange. They've got like two or three of them downtown. And they're like, now, see, I always say Middle Eastern. Pakistani's not Middle Eastern, is it? Wouldn't you say Eastern? Pakistan? That's a good question. Huh? Because what are the interests? But I always refer to that. But India and Pakistan, it's like Eastern, not, not Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern is like your Arabs and your Israelis and your Turks. And you're Saudi Arabian, like I said, Arabs. 
But anyway, there's a tremendous number of Pakistanis and Indians in Toronto. There are people from all over the world. It's a real multicultural city, unlike this place, which is just a bunch of people who refuse to speak English. So they call it a multicultural city. So anyway, they have these currency places, and there's this one young guy who's, I'd say, about 20 years old, maybe early 20s, who works. He's like the uh, head. He does the most of the work. And then anytime you go in there to exchange currency, which I've been doing for years, he's in there. Now, I don't want to say that this is the best-looking person I've ever seen in my life. See, there he goes again on this kick. Well, I'm just telling you, I want to make him famous. I want you, when you go up to Toronto, to change your currency with this guy. And very friendly, too, by the way. He's from Milwaukee. What's a guy from, I don't know, Pakistan, India? I don't know what his back. He's dark. You know what I'm saying? Like dark, not black dark, but whatever that eastern dark. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, like I think Gandhi dark. Not that dark. And the next time I go there, what I'm going to do is change $500, but I'm only going to do it $10 at a time. Huh? Which gives me an excuse to go in there 50 times the first day. But anyway. How did I get off onto that? Because I'm trying desperately to think of all these people that you hate and I don't really care about. There are several of them because you're the hard ass. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a very easygoing guy. I like everybody, generally speaking, especially if they look good. Oh, geez, i got to do a break. I'll get to that Tom Jicka thing in a minute. We love Tom Jicka. He's stupid! We love our friends in Plantation, even G-E-F. They always put the initials of the letter writer, never the name in these letters, you know, that Tom puts in there. And for obvious reasons, to protect the guilty. I don't know what the GE stands for. I'll come up with something good, but F must stand for fart as an old fart. 26 after 10 at 560 WQAM. change already just thinking about that change place 1032 at 560 wqm so anyway tom jicka says well first of all gef and plantation writes your article on neil rogers and howard stern was most enlightening i have never understood their appeal evidently a segment of the male population has never progressed beyond their juvenile tendencies <laughs> just contrast ed kaplan and rogers kaplan is well spoken knowledgeable positive free of racial or cultural bias informative and very entertaining Rogers is grammatically challenged, uninformed, negative, racially and culturally biased, and appeals to the intellectually challenged at an adolescent level. <laughs> Our culture must reflect the audience that makes Rogers and Stern unbeatable. Signed, G.E.F. in Plantation. Answer from Tom Jicka. On behalf of Neil, let me thank you profusely. You have given him an entire program, maybe a week of shows, to rant that I made up this lever, never, the letter, never have, never will, he says, to pay tribute to Kaplan. It's no secret that Ed and I have become friends over the years. I almost didn't print your letter because of that. However, that would be unfair, too. But I'll refrain from comment on Ed. For the record, you're wrong about a lot of things you say about Neil. He's extremely intelligent and informed. <laughs> He took his program in the direction he has because listeners respond to it better than they did to the informative, issue-oriented programs he did for many years, being a babysitter for old farts. Occasionally, when something major happens, he reverts. Either way, he's one of the most entertaining people to ever work in this market. Obviously, he's not for everyone, says my close, bald friend, Tom Jicka. Thank you, Tom. How do you like that? And what do you mean, one of? 
Huh? How do you like that? One of the most. Oh, I guess well, he wasn't going to comment about Ed. I mean, I'm not in the same league with Ed Kaplan, am I? No. No. I mean, Ed's a good guy. Boring, but I mean, he's a good guy. And why is he boring? Because he tied it. See, I don't know if Ed Kaplan could be interesting talking about other things. But he's got a gambling show at 10 o'clock at night. He'll be on tonight after the ball game until the wee hours of the morning, until the last game is played. Why does he stay on until the last game is over with? For the gamblers, of course. He's got a sports-slash-gambling show, which is why he does the show from High Life, from the Dog Track, from the Princess Casino, from the here and there, and all these, all these places, all of these things. And because he talks about, you know, sports, obviously it can't be very interesting. With all due respect to the format here at QAM, sports uh, talk is very, very, I mean, coma-inducing. It's boring. I think it might be interesting if we had, in fact, next year on April Fool's Day, I got a great idea. Let's let the cat out of the bag right now. We'll promote it, make a big deal out. They'll never go along with it, though, because they're so insecure. Oh, gee, you're going to take our sports away for one day? We'll never make it. How about April Fool's Day next year? They come on in the morning and announce that we've changed the format. We're going like all serious talk and that everybody on the station on that day talks about anything and everything except sports. Huh? Wouldn't that, isn't that a great concept on April Fool's Day? Who would be able to accomplish that besides Hank? Oh, I think Ed Kaplan could probably talk about a lot of other things besides sports. Like maybe the track. Oh, that's right. That's sports. Um... The, uh, uh, yeah, the, Not to uh, mean that as a shot, but I've heard Hank talk about the other stuff. Oh, Hank can talk about anything, right. I'd, I'd much rather hear Hank talk about stuff other than sports. Because that's, that's, and by the way, how come everybody was ripping Hank in ass? He was, I want, because I know Hank is back, he'll be on, on 2 o'clock today from Mashula's. I want to make sure Hank knows, and I'm sure he's already heard about it, that last Thursday and Friday, for whatever reason, after these uh, horrible trends came out, the audience decided to blame Hank for it and just to launch into a uh, all-out attack, a verbal attack on Hank. Why that is, I'm not really sure. I just think that he ought to know that, just to make him feel, that, he, you know, if he doubted that he was back home, make sure he knows it, because that's how they are here. You could be on for a 100 years. You could become the nicest guy in the world. You could, well, Which, of course, he don't want to be the nicest guy, neither do I. But they just ripped him a big, fat, smelly ass here on Thursday and Friday, on and off, off and on. So anyway, and uh, the headline says, Neil Rogers entertains Atomic Train didn't, and because the second letter is about uh, Tom's scathing review of the Atomic Train miniseries on uh, NBC, and here's a picture of Rob Blow, and does he ever? And Tom basically said uh, the series sucks, and this letter writer is very upset. Neil Rogers entertains Atomic Train didn't, which is why it's history, is the headline here. Nice going, Tom. Thank God for Tom Jicka. And thank God for my late personal friend, Bill Cosford from the Herald. There was a guy that appreciated my show because he was bright enough to understand it, to know what it was all about. And he had some nerve dying. At, uh, how old was he like? He wasn't even 40, was he? Like right around. Boy, what a good guy he was. What the hell was he doing wasting his time in this town? Now, see, most of the people are writing the newspapers here. Like, uh, oh, John Grogan, you read his going away uh, column? In the, in the uh, Sun Sentinel this morning? <laughs> Sucked. Really weak, okay? It's enough to make me say, even though about once every six months you wrote something that made sense and took a little bit of balls, uh, good luck to you, John, wherever you're going. Pretty weak. Pretty lame. Like here we have the Belmont and the big charismatic story and the Chris Antley story and the Wayne Lucas story and all, everything that went along with it on Saturday, a tragedy. And what does Eddie Pope write about? Another stupid Jimmy Johnson story. Just what we need is another stupid goddamn Jimmy Johnson story. Eddie the Pope rhymes with dope. Suppo you know, supposed to be a major sports writer. And he's writing about some stupid Jimmy Johnson story the first week in June after the uh, Belmont Stakes and all the other stuff that went along with it. So typical of this town. Just so, it's definitive right there. What you see right there is what this place is all about. So, what do you don't like my idea? Having him do all serious talk on that day? I bet you Joe Rose could talk about something besides sports, huh? He could talk about something besides sports. I'd love to hear Mandich on there talking about stuff, you know, like. Uh... Oh, and by the way, he said uh, teats again on Friday. Only well, he didn't pronounce it that way. Yeah. Nice going, Jimmy. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> 
I never, I mean, somewhere in the FCC uh, bylaws, there must be a thing, though, that if you're a dumb jock, if you're like an ex-jock, or like if uh, you're doing a sports show, you can say all of these things. The, the other, these perverts like Neil Rogers, they can't say those words. But if you're doing a sports show, you can say all of these things as many times as you want, like teats and uh, whatever else he said. 21 before 11 at 560 WQM. You want 560 WQM has no shame. Starting this Monday, it's the O.J. Simpson, Glen Hill, and Super Dave Katrina Show. All right. 6 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday, only on Sports Fag Radio. W.Q.A.M. Al Gore. Al Gore, as you have never heard or seen him before. Four years ago, you gave me your nomination to be vice president. This is some crowd. I've been watching you doing that Macarena on television. And if I could have your silence, I would like to demonstrate for you the Al Gore version of the Macarena. I am not trying to do Macarena. 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 Would you like to see it again? No. Tengo mucha compasión. Tengo mucha emoción. When your alarm goes off in the morning, Macarena. When one of your children reaches for cereal and fruit, Macarena. 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 1045 at 560 WQM. Now, I want to tell you one of the most disgusting things that I've ever seen in my life, and I thought that they would, like, redo it, you know, but uh, now it's obvious to me they did it intentionally. That thing in the Britney Spears video where the girl is standing in the front of the uh, car on the uh, hood. You know, she's singing in front of the car, and there's, like, two uh, chicks sitting on the uh, hood of the car, one on each side, and the one is picking her crotch, you know, that part where she reaches in, and her shorts are, like, deep inside her... And she picks her. You, you didn't see that? Uh, I must have missed it. How could you? No, you didn't see the video then. You haven't seen the. You saw the Britney Spears video. It was on that one here, but I must have uh, been looking you away didn't during that. You see the crotch part. picking a, a scene? I only saw it the one time. No, I didn't see the crotch. Well, picking. I'm sure that if you uh, watch that video again, you'll notice very carefully that uh, you didn't. I don't it. usually miss things like. And that. You wouldn't miss this. Talk about a sexist uh, world it is. See, would they, if if a guy was like rearranging his privates, would they show that? No, of course not. They wouldn't put that on a video. Oh, that's coming next week. Well, actually, what they have—they have Ricky Martin looking for his privates, and of course, with no success, searching. Don't get started on a Ricky Martin, okay? Don't get started. He's, you know, he's hotter than a pistol, no matter where you go in the world. Everywhere you go, there he is, Ricky Martin. He can't sing for shit. But they don't make any difference to anybody. Here's the fact that says Mel Torme was an arrogant asshole, another phony pain in the ass. Like all the stuff that'll come out about that jackass Bob Hope, who's never, ever said anything funny in his life. Absolutely correct, sir. He's a complete piece of crap and has one foot in the grave already. He's only, what, 185? You're right. More hype. Bob Hope. No talent, no humor, no comedy. Never said anything funny in his whole goddamn life. All these old fossils. And Mel Torme was one of them. You're absolutely right. I'll tell you another one who's been dead a long time and deserved to be was Peter Lawford. There's another piece of crap who just hung around because he was married to one of the Kennedys and used to, uh, you know, get uh, JFK and Bobby Laid all the time, like with Marilyn Monroe, etc. And what about Peter Lawford's uh, involvement there in Marilyn's death? Anybody got any opinions on that? No. Not that I want to talk about it. Oh, and by the way, there's a book that came out. Uh, what the hell is the name of it? I was reading the review yesterday in one of the Toronto papers um, by Joseph Bonanno, Jr., you know, Joe Bananas from The Mob, the old man, who's still alive, by the way. And this is like an expose. I, I don't understand that, based on what I read, which I have to get that book immediately. Now, maybe somebody out there knows the name of that book, okay, by Joe Bonanno, Jr. Not that the Italians were ever involved in the mob, no. the Sicilians, but Josh Friedman. There's another example of somebody you hate that I don't have any uh, feelings about one way or the other. Not that I want to see him, don't get me wrong. He sat in your chair contemptuously also. 
What do you mean by that? Contempt? What does that mean, contemptuously? When, when I how, ask how them nicely. You, how do you sit in a chair contemptuously? How do you do that? When I expressed our desire that he not sit in either one of these chairs, yeah. he went in immediately. And put his fat ass put in his the fat chair. In it. See there? I'm sitting on it. I'm not breaking it. In your chair. Yeah. And then to me... Well, am I supposed to hate him for doing that? And then to me, when I left him a little note on the See, back I of never mind, smelled him. He said, oh... See, I don't go around smelling people, which evidently you do, but I'm, I never smelled him. I never smelled the fat Joe's Nor part. have you spent a significant amount of time around him. Thank God. To and I, nor, the nor, do I, that, nor do that, I care that, that to. No. No. See, and I'm not one of those people, and, and just like, uh, you know, my good friend Rimmer, who I grant you was a tough, uh, tough person, to, you know. He's uh, tough. But once you get to know him, he's a good guy. He means well, even though he's uh, annoying at, at best. And uh, extremely annoying at worst, but nevertheless, and you hate him like poison. No, I don't hate him. Yes, you do. Oh, stop. Now, that uh, the, the audience is like, I did that well, wonderful the congratulations audience is doing thing. belly flops. They're doing a collective belly flop, laughing their ass off, because they know you're full of crap. All right. You hate, hate him like poison. I don't hate him any more than anybody else in this building does. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty widespread. I, I don't think the word hate uh, is so much as paranoia. Like Defoe, Defoe doesn't hate him, he's just paranoid and, and hates him, but that's the reason why. Because Defoe, being so insecure and fat in his old age, always has had this psychotic paranoia that I'm you know, going to go out to try to get my friend's jobs. Do I try to get my friend's jobs? I gave that up years ago. I made bad, bad mistakes with Bill Calder and Stan Major. Bill Calder was a talent. Stan Major was just generally a uh, uh, pain in the ass. Don't forget Lasseter. He wasn't a friend of mine. Well, you got him a job. I got him a job because at the time he was he was doing a good job on GBS. You know, you weren't even around in those days. No, I, the Tampa thing. We called him on the air. He was on the beach in Davenport. Yeah, and he's still he's uh, still on FL. See, and now you had to go and mention him. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ, which I do hate him like poison. Can't stand him. No talent, fat, pompous piece of turd. Terminal and depressing. That's one thing I've always said about him. Just the sound of his voice could put you into a coma or make you want to blow your brains out. But don't start. You see, you're starting to digress now. You're starting to get off into people that aren't even here anymore. I dislike how, about, how about the bird? You hated I would rather the bird. not encounter him. You hated I hated bird. him on the show. And he was obnoxious, by the way, to everyone around. I don't know if you noticed that. He was never obnoxious to me. Oh, <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone and we, hated him. We don't like even Bill. know if he's still alive. He was in a no, hospital we don't. here a we couple don't of months ago. Having a rough time. The very best, but yeah, oh, yeah. that show. See that that comes that comes across as so insincere. You wish him nothing but the very best. Well, what does that mean? I mean, I don't want him to croak, and I hope that he has a pleasant life. But uh, I don't want to hear him on the air. Yeah. All the female coworkers couldn't stand him. They because he was a lech. He was a lech, and he would like fall on people on purpose. Right. Well, he <laughs> at least that's what they said. I'm yes. just going by based Oops, on what the female club workers. Well, he's not the only one that ever played that game. Oops, he, excuse me. He could clear a hallway faster. I learned. Than I learned how to do that on uh, Queen's Day in Amsterdam. Four hundred thousand beautiful young people out there in the street. Oops, I, I kept sliding and falling and uh, getting squeezed. I was squeezing it. Well, hey, the press, the pressure of human flesh. You know, you got to move somewhere. Well, we could make a long list of all these people that you have despised and hated, and then I'm the one that takes the uh, crap. Not that I really care. See, I don't care if people think I'm an asshole or what they think. I never have cared, and I never will. But it just, I, I don't mind getting blamed for, you know, what is my thing. But when I have to get blamed for your thing, then I... Uh, what, you don't think it goes the other way, like ten times as much? Like what? Every time you rip somebody, I get beat. I have to hear about it. I have to, they either cry or they Every yell. Every time I rip somebody, like who? Who do like I ever rip? Who, who have I ever rip? Whoever. Whoever Who in like the psychotherapy the over here in the afternoon. <laughs> Who have I ever ripped? Now, do you hear from that bitch? You don't hear from no, me. No, not anymore. See, I did. I had those two or three uh, calls at home from my best, close, personal, <laughs> talentless friend who latched onto me like some kind of a uh, uh, bloodsucker, like a leech. See, when you've had a certain amount of success, there's the, all these people who want to like latch on, just like those. Remember they used to use leeches back in the 20s and 30s to cure illnesses? To suck it out of you, so to speak. A lot of bloodsuckers in this business, and there was one of them calling me up at home like my. And of course, it's my own fault for giving out my number. Why do I get? Or, or maybe it was on the uh, list at the station. That's probably it. Calling me up like I wanted to talk to her, like she, like she belongs in this business. Oh, the only reason I came down here was because of you. 
Yeah, right. Like I'm supposed to feel guilty about that. And I guess I do. I feel real guilty. Like it's my fault that she's got no talent and that she's unlistenable and is a real poor man's Randy Rhodes. I mean, saying that, poor, and that would be like being a poor man's Mel Torme, you know? Being a poor man's Randy Rhodes, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. How's Jim doing, by the way? So I can't believe you haven't seen the Britney Spears picking uh, her crotch video. That's uh, embarrassing. Something for you to really uh, work on. Boy, I just, I'm never going to get through all this stuff today. You people on the phone, you wait, wait, uh, you know. We had, a whole, we had a lady from Indiana on there on her dime. I'm sorry, but I, I got a lot of stuff to talk about today, which doesn't happen very often. But I have a lot of crap I have to get with. Let's try the mobile in Hialeah. Hello. Neil, how are you? Okay, okay sir. How was Toronto? Great. Still there, Richard, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from there, and I really miss the place. i got to get back there. But anyway, listen, the book is called Bound by Honor. Right. And it's written by Bill Bonanno, the son of uh, Joe Bananas. And it doesn't really, you know, it kind of sugarcoats the mob. and then at Oh, the really? End it, yeah, it sugarcoats the mob a bit. And at the end, it has this thing regarding the Kennedys, how the mob killed the Kennedy, and right. he actually reveals the shooter and so on and so forth. Huh. So it's okay. Maybe I'll just go in the store and uh, sit, sit around and have a uh, cappuccino and uh, read it, you know, and then put it back on the shelf Yeah, I instead of buying like, it. I mean, if you like mob stories, and obviously I think you do, it's, it's going to leave you hanging. Uh-huh. And the book, too. Okay. Take care. Okay, I'll see you at the Eaton Center. All right. Before they go out of business. Okay, so there we go. There's the load on the net. Bound by Honor by Bill Bonanno, who's the son of Joe uh, Bonanos, who's 94 years old and still alive, by the way. They hit him with five shots, and he's still alive. This morning on CNBC, they were doing um, Joe Kernan and uh, what's his name? They were, they were doing uh, quotes from The Godfather. It was great. Somebody was named the CEO of some company or uh, assistant CEO, and they said he's going to be the consigliere, and they were doing all these lines from The Godfather. It was great. Oh! Anybody with taste loves The Godfather. If you haven't seen The Godfather, you don't even you haven't even begun to discover life yet, okay? Just stop and think of all the lines, all the scenes, all the material. Just forget about two and three, just from Godfather 1. They shot Sonny on the causeway. He's dead. I mean, just, I, I could, I, I might, I might just do that one day. Maybe I'll do that next April 1st. Remember somebody, I've got it at home. Somebody sent me the whole dialogue, the script of The Godfather. I might just read the whole thing on the air next uh, April 1. We'll make copies and do parts. We'll get some people in. Yeah, that's a good idea. I have a great idea who can play Luca Brazzi, Depot. Oh, yeah, by next April 1st, easily. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we got to get to the God business, too. Larry Johnson scored that winning basket for the Knicks, and Allah did it, which I didn't see that because I pay no attention to that Spo ball. But Allah did it. And then, of course, uh, poor Chris Antley in that charismatic story. What a disaster on Saturday. Disastrous day at the Belmont. And Chris Antley uh, possibly saved the horse from uh, maybe even worse life-threatening injuries and certainly saved him from worse injury by holding his foot there in the stretch. But then he's got to go on TV. And I understand he's distraught and he's emotional, and I have no problem with that. But uh, if God would have wanted us to win today, we would have won. See, there's a lesson for all you gamblers out there. God doesn't bet 8 to 5, okay? God don't take 8 to 5 shots. Four minutes before 11 at 560 WQAM. WQAM, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Lemon, yellow, orange, yellow, gas, sex, X, black, shoot, road, do, galax, time, and tap, test, and X, lower, mid, low, on, the, shot, done, lay, six, clarity, for my gut, text, a trim, lanolin, fluorescent, cavity, oval, tea, travel, me, benzene, apple, sheen, latisha, feldeen, my doll, dick, bit, queen, and hexany, movie, lips, and cola, as per gum, better use, and cannibal, and very young. Mambo, Balambo, Shaka, Laka, Lana, Cain, Camel, Beneath, Derry, Eves, and Rookin. Gosh, I've got a Torbidon, Tussie, and Tylenol. What with the things that they be giving to the black kids? Do they think it's so afro? You look for names at the drugstore. Yeah. Euphora, Latoya, Pandora, Cream Morris. 
send, send, buffer it. Dead man, etc. Robot doesn't yo play. Try him in a cuselix. No dose people. Robo sells a secret. Sky lotion, Motrin. Raising it. Tagging that plate. Tex, Malcolm X. Tic tac. Yes, I can. Night on my ladder. See the call and carry toss. Arise is my keeper. Dead Maria. Night will try him in a fix and fail. By the dirt machine and badges sell. Then the listen down on the end. Neutrogena and Moesha. Wars with the names that they be given to the black kids. Do they think it's so afro? Yes. Do the four names that the drugs know? Yo, 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 yo. Why do they think it's black to give the kids so some names? With all the names that they'll find at the corner of Walgreens. Oh, well, uh, we be looking for something fancy. It's 1103 at 560 WQAM. Yeah, that God crap again reared its ugly head over the weekend. First with a basketball game with uh, Larry Johnson. He gets the four-pointer there miraculously at the end of the game to uh, tie it and then win it with a free throw. Four-pointer to win the game. And, of course, a la, ba 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 And then uh, Chris Antley with Charismatic. If God was, I mean, you know, I'm all on your side, Chris. Nobody seems to like you. Like Hank said, you got that heebie-jeebie look in your eyes. There's something there we don't trust. Everybody seems to think, you know, that this guy is going to fall back off the wagon again any second. And, of course, now after the disaster on Saturday, I'm sure a lot of people are just waiting exactly for the next load to go up the old nose. You know what I'm saying? They're just waiting, counting the seconds before he falls off the wagon. And I'm thinking, well, here's a good story, okay? Here's a kid that came back, did a great job. It's like a fairy tale story, pardon that expression, and then uh, the horse breaks down, you know? And, of course, Wayne Lucas, did he ever have a horse that didn't break down? No. He's, uh, you know, he's got a little problem there, Wayne. I don't want to go into the details, but nevertheless... And so there's Chris Antley, you know, falling off the horse, falling on his ass, and he r- runs over and grabs his leg and holds it up so he doesn't put his weight on it, and the van comes out and takes him off, and he had the surgery yesterday, and he's going to be fine. He's going out to stud, and et cetera, and so on. But why? You know, here's Chelsea Candy on there, 940-year-old Chelsea Candy, who never sold a freight train. We love her. And she gets him on the air, and tears are rolling down his cheeks, and he's going through the thing. Well, if God would have wanted us to win today. See, that's why we can't get that goddamn war over in Yugoslavia. That's why we can't stop the uh, bombing in Ireland. That's why the Pakistanians and Indians are dropping bombs on each other. And by the way, keep in mind, they got the uh, nuclear weapons over there now. Because God doesn't have time for that crap. Don't you understand? Don't you get it? Uh-huh. God can't be bothered with little, little crap like that. That's why God didn't interfere in Colorado at Columbia High School. He can't be bothered with stuff like that. That's why when that girl, that martyr, when she said, oh, yes, I believe in God, she blew her crap away, okay? Because God didn't have time for Cassie or whatever her name was, Bernal. Wasn't that her name? Something like that. He didn't have time for that. He's busy worrying about ball games. And, of course, Greg Reed says, all right, that's the way it should be. Because that's our mentality around here. I'm going to tell you, it's the only time I ever worked in a radio station where the general manager comes to work with a jock strap on every day. Is that embarrassing? And part of our sales staff, too, yeah, wears the jock straps. Yeah, screw Ann. I think she wears one. Big one. No, not a jock strap. Kind of like, what did you, why, why do you keep hiding that? Hey, thing, it keeps moving around. It keeps I don't know moving around all by itself. Joe Costello was playing with it last time I saw it. How about the uh, plastic one? He was running all around the building chasing people around. Yeah, with his big plastic. Yeah, he only wishes. His big black. Yeah, his big black thing. I heard that Joe is hung like a butterfly, by the way. I heard all the uh, growth went to the nose is what I heard. But, hey, it's the Italian way, you know. So, anyway, speaking of growth, they had this, uh, they have, it, they had, it's uh, going on still. What the, I'm having trouble today. You want to know why? Because I got off that plane. Gay days, less controversy, it says right there in the front of the Sun Sentinel. Here's a picture of these screaming queens on there. And you know something? See, I used to be one of those people for all, up until today, as a matter of fact. But I'm uh, doing a quick turnaround, so to speak. I was always opposed to this crap, all these gay pride parades and all these gay days at uh, Disney, which is kind of like uh, an oxymoron, you know, or is, is it redundant, something like that. Every day is gay day at Disney. But I was always against that because I thought this, uh, you know, just uh, reinforces the ugly stereotype of all these silly, swishy, mincing queens, you know. But you know something? Now I like it because it pisses off the goyim. That's why I like it. It pisses off all these phony baloney, in-the-closet, pseudo-intellectual right-wing Christians, okay, who are probably busy drilling glory holes right now. 
That's right, they're doing it for old glory. Hallelujah. It says the event began eight years ago simply with a note posted on a computer message board. At first, only a smattering of people turned out for it. But as opponents launched boycotts of Disney and organized protests against it, the event continued to grow. Even that fag Neil Rogers likes it now. How do you like that, is what it says. Now it encompasses four amusement parks in Orlando. It lasts for five days. Organizers say it draws as many as 100,000 people. And you want to know the name of the guy? Who started Gay Days at Disney? Wait till you hear this. You better sit down, folks. I'm telling you right now. I learned this myself. I almost, I almost spit my coffee on the floor, and I don't even drink coffee. I almost spit it out. It's annoying that someone is unable to just let people have a good time, says Doug Swallow. Oh, my gosh. Organizer of Gay Days. Are you ready for this? No. no I didn't think you would be. <laughs> exactly. You know my motto, when in doubt, spit it out. But not Doug. His name is Doug Swallow. <laughs> that has to be. He had to make that up, didn't he? Huh? It really has taken on a life of its own, Swallow said. <laughs> There's just something about that. I'm sorry. It just, uh, I don't know. It rubs me the wrong way, so to speak. Gay Day organizer, Doug Swallow. Man. And that goes on. I'll get into the thing about the uh, bitch there from, where was she from? From uh, Boston? Yeah, from Boston. Came down to Boston with her kids. She was all bent out of shape. Too bad, sweetheart. Okay, get used to it. Get with it. We'll see you on Church Street in Toronto. We'll see you in like any real city in the world where the guys are walking around holding hands. We'll see you down there on South Beach. I bet they're holding it on South Beach. I'll bet you they are. They're holding it right now. Nine minutes after 11 at 560 WQM. We God? your back. Remember that, because that's where we're looking for love. It's where your crack's at. The fetish held by me, F-A-G. I got less facial hair than a leslie. So don't make fun. Don't poke your nose at the queer cake boy lifestyle I chose. Tuck your gay jokes and start being silent, because you might get a taste of homosexual violence. Because we don't play. Your butt's my target like a dog in his territory. You're <laughs> market. When you see us with our ray bands on, we're just sighing the park that we want to get our hands on. We are the F.A.G. We're the F.A.G. Sister. Ooh. We need no perpetrator. And don't you forget it. We are the F.A.G. Really all kind of hard to swallow. Just some thing in Let me see you just prance with me. Just prance with me. Now slide. Ooh, right there. Yeah. Let me see you do some weight bend. Oh, perfect. And then quick lift. Uh. That's it, baby. Just, mm. Whoa. Now look what you went and did. Oh, I gotta wipe this off. Oh, Jesus, it's everywhere. Does anybody have a moist towel head? Okay, look, let's cut this crap out. You're no Judy Garland. So does Doug Swallow or what? You think Doug Swallow? Uh-huh. Anyway, it's 11.15 at 560 WQM, the Hank Goldberg Show from Shula Steak 2 at 2 o'clock. we got Talking Baseball with Donald Z. Brennan at 6. Pre-game show at 6.30. Orioles at the Marlins. The Marlins are red hot. They won five in a row. Is there any? No. You can almost feel the interest building, can't you? Joe Costello wants free tickets for the Yankee games this weekend, walking around here with his uh, Yankee jersey on. Pretty embarrassing, Joe. So anyway, going back to this Gay Days thing in Orlando, says, in the week before Gay Days, a coalition of conservative groups was rebuffed in its attempt to air anti-gay advertisements on local television stations, declaring that homosexuality is learned behavior that can be changed through religious faith. Here we go again with the crazy religionists. The advertisements ran on four Christian stations instead, talking about preaching to the choir. On Saturday, two twin-engine planes sputtered through the blue sky above the pointy spires of Cinderella's castle with dueling messages hoping to grab the attention of the throngs below. 
And it goes on about the Tanya Brown frowning at the small groups of men and women dressed in red and holding hands or kissing. She had come from Boston to Disney World with three children ages 8, 9, and 11. We planned this as a special experience for the kids, she said. They're spending the whole time asking me, Mommy, why are those men doing that? And probably Mommy ought to say, none of your goddamn business. Let's go, uh, you know, in the uh, little world there. What do they call that thing? That little, that the annoying. Small world. It's a small world. Yeah, it's small. See this? It's small. Well, I bet you the glory hole consistents are real busy up there this week. Uh-huh. Oh, man. Can you see that? Those gigantic drilling sounds you hear all around the Orlando area up there. Oh, here's a call from Orlando right now. Hello. Hello, Dale. Yes, sir. This is Doug from Orlando. This isn't Doug Swallow, is it? Oh, yes, it is. All right. Here's Doug Swallow. Oh! Hi, Dale. I just wanted to call and thank you for your support of our events. I think it's great. I hope you piss all these going off big time. Well, the reason we decided to do Gay Days was because of... Uh, Right in the middle of the park, you might have seen as a big silver ball. We just love it. It's just great. Yeah. And uh, we're all wearing red, um, and uh, we're crowding the local areas. We brought a lot of business to the Orlando area. They love us here. Of course. And uh, the hotels are packed, and we're packing them. I bet you are. So, You're packing it. Uh, we're going to hold it next year. We're going to hold it every year. And we, the event, we love too, yeah. Here. We're going to hold it. So let me ask you where, oh, the question that all America is wondering right now, does Doug swallow? Doug <laughs> swallows. Yes. <laughs> no. Sure he does. But the interesting part at the end of the article, now this is in the Sun Sentinel down here this morning, it says in 1998, dozens of protesters lined an access road to the park condemning the event. But on Saturday, except for the banner on one that one airplane, open protest at the park seemed to have vanished. Well, that's because we killed all the heteros up here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you can't beat them, shoot them. New, new meaning to the word gay bashing. It's reverse gay bashing. Okay, Doug. Well, listen, they're tracing the number, and uh, they'll be out to get you in about a half an hour. Oh, um, yeah, we love you. Okay. Bye. See ya. That's Doug Swallow. What? From calling all the way from Orlando. He was checking it out. He's He does swallow, too, by the way. What? He swallows, okay? He's one of those guys that swallows, and you like anal sex, and all you know. I'm, very, I'm an old fart, okay? I'm from the old school. I take whatever I can get. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line, and you'd be shocked. Yeah, so here we are. God is worried about the uh, Belmont Stakes, and he's worried about uh, the uh, Knicks uh, series there, the basketball games. And OJ copes with notoriety and isolation. Isn't that a shame? Here it is on the front page again. It wasn't bad enough. We had to read Mel Torme croaked on the front page of the Herald, as if anybody really cared very much. But we also got to have this, uh, oh, this obnoxious, this unctuous one on the front page of our newspaper with that look in our face, with that arrogant, smug look on his puss. Simpson copes with notoriety and isolation. Who was it that was in here this morning talking about the uh, laws in Florida? Who was that? Duff. Was it Bluff? No. Adam. Oh, it was Adam from our sales department. That's a little too cerebral for Duff. Yeah, it was Adam talking about the fact that a lot of these Florida laws, of course, make it easier for deadbeats like O.J. to come down here to avoid uh, having to pay the uh, court judgment, you know, to the Goldmans and the Browns. A lot of deadbeats come down here to Florida. That's one of the reasons that so many people come here. First, we have no state income tax. And number two, there are a lot of laws that let you wriggle off the hook when it comes to all of these things that you're supposed to be paying. So that's why a lot of losers come to Florida. Worked for me. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Good morning. Yes, sir. Hey. Uh, quick thing, um, re- uh, rehashing on your, uh, Popovich or whatever their name are, brothers, uh, my girlfriend. Doug and I- Jeff Popovich. There we go, Which, there we go. Popovich one has the Tony? Uh, I don't know, but, uh, last uh, weekend my girlfriend and I went to Dayton Mall, and, uh, basically we happened to walk by uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, and I said, hold on, home, because we were listening to your program, and there you are. As soon as you walk in, they're right there, big, big poster of them sitting together, and let me tell you, I'm a straight guy. I'm very comfortable with what I am. I'm very secure. And let me tell you, they're very good-looking guys. Yes, I mean, they are. If I were Doug Swallow, I would do it. And probably <laughs> Swallow, too. Oh. And she agreed. She agreed. They were very and I'm not Doug guys. Swallow. I still would do them both. Yeah. Oh, man. So, both hey, at the same time. You have a very good taste. I okay. God taste bless you, that. sir. Yep. And we believe you. No problem. Okay. Bye-bye. See, and he didn't have to even bring out any pictures. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Yeah, I always worry about those guys that always have to. Oh yeah, see here's a picture. Here's my girlfriend. Here's uh, my other uh, four or five other girlfriends. Here's my fiance. Here's my. And it turns out he's a guy from you know family with ten kids and got eight sisters. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Just remember one thing: 
Real men don't have to prove it to anybody. Just keep that in mind, okay? They look in the mirror in the morning and they say, now there's a real something. Here's Virginia Beach. Hello? Hey, Antonio. How you doing? Pretty good, sir. I uh, survived the uh, gay days this weekend again. Although I didn't go to, to Magic Kingdom because it was it was absolutely filled to capacity by 11 a.m. Yeah. Uh, which is, I guess, record for Disney, only beaten by gay days 6 and gay days 4. How do you like that? And, and the Goyam have stopped protesting. How do you like that? They well, gave up. Probably they're setting up stands and selling uh, uh, pink triangles or something. I saw them last year. It was a whole bunch of Baptists, and they were lining this one street as you were entering the park, and they were holding up all their wonderful signs, and, and uh, you know, we were just screaming back at them anyway. So uh, it was it was funny because they they actually had one of the largest grosses in Disney history. So Disney obviously is never going to stop doing this. Of course not. Why should they stop doing it? It's good for business. Right. And we uh, we went to. Uh, you I, see, these the Christians are always threatening. They're going to boycott uh, this place, and they're going to boycott Disney, and they're going to get Howard off the air, and they're going to get me off the air. In the meantime, uh, everybody, uh, all of the above, are making more money than ever before, and uh, you know it's just a handful of lunatics farting in a windstorm. You know, it's funny because I, I mentioned this to you before. My mother and father were both were both heavily in the evangelical movement. In fact, I've eaten dinner with Billy Graham, and it's funny because when my mother was young, the only thing I know about my mother's youth was my grandfather once told me that she was a party girl, mm -hmm. which makes me wonder if you know she went guilty and flipped out and freaked out and got born again. I don't know. But I anyway, not understand that, so that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I just thought I'd call and say hello, and, and it, was, it was a success. Everything that was pretty real. shocking hearing from Doug Swallow, wasn't it? Yeah, we was. You know, my only gripe with, with part of it is, is, you know, these guys that are running around. And in fact, I think I'm almost uh, reading something Freudian into it. We take one call from Doug Swallow, and the next call is uh, the guy with the Jeff Popovich poster. And all ties fits right in together. The only gripe I have is there are some of the some of the guys and, and some of the lesbians that were there were doing stuff that that you know was outrageous to the point. And the I don't care. I don't care anymore. I, know, I, I, I used, I used to bother I me. I don't care. I want to take my if I want to take as a gay man. Want to take my nephews. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want to have these assholes around. Uh, you know, making uncomfortable Figur for me. Figuratively speaking, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so uh, oh, and you know, like I was an adventure because every fence has got a million glory holes in it. Okay. Thanks for the good news. <laughs> oh. oh God! Five, six, seven. I understand that they, because uh, Looney Tunes was where Woody Woodpecker come from. I understand they borrowed him for the week. Five, six, seven. Oh, five, sixty. Pound five, sixty on the eighteen. Don't say Looney Tunes, because then Rosalind Carter will get all upset again. Isn't this the week we're supposed to be uh, learning about crazy people, something like that? Huh? Yeah, they had a big thing on it. The Tipper Gore, I think. Is yeah, doing a big thing her, about think, crazy people because she used to be. And we're but supposed now she's to better. Oh, she she's better. How can we tell? She stopped trying to get all the uh, music out of the records. No, she's taking her medication. Oh, and guess what they showed again? By the way, speaking of crazy people and reefer madness and all these other and about the uh, excuses that people make the scapegoats in a society. I've seen it about fifty million times. But what's this series that they're doing on CNN, which is very interesting, by the way? But who the hell can ever figure out when it's on? Perspectives or something where they're doing this whole rundown of the twentieth uh, century. You know what I'm talking about? And so they showed again, they're in the 50s now. And they showed the thing with Elvis and with rock and roll and a whole bit, and how they were breaking records. They were taking actual physical records and smashing them and talking about this degeneracy and about the end of the world. It, ne it never stops. Everything bad that ever happens, it's because of music. And a guy gets on there and he says, well, there's no question that this is a conspiracy to get the white man to uh, uh, adopt the taste of the nigger. He actually he used the uh, N-word, as a matter of fact, back then. This is back in the 50s. Oh, I guess it was okay to say nigger in the 50s? Uh -huh. Yeah. How do you like that? So the same old song, and here we are 40-some years later, and they're still, oh, it's uh, Marilyn Manson, and it's those video games, and Bubba's up there hawking a china with the same thing, which he probably learned that from Alan Tipper, too. What now? Wouldn't they, how, how do we make that slogan? You know, Tippy Canoe and Tyler too. I, I can see this forming on the tip of my tongue. This slogan. You know, if you vote for Al, you get Tipper too. Something like that. Which is the sad part because Al's a good guy, even though he's as boring as dog crap. But she, she's a crazy bitch. In fact, she ought to be talking about mental illness because she's an expert. That would be like Ed Kaplan doing a show on compulsive gambling. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, pseudo intellectual Ed Kaplan, who's so much brighter than I am and so much more articulate, is what it done said. See, I want to I want to talk to the level of the average schmuck out there, okay? G E F. And by the way, did we get a call from Plantation yet? No. Somebody that listens and likes this show on Plantation? No. No. T 
10 years I lived in Plantation, every call, every letter from Plantation, negative, including that chief of police that hates me like poison. Oh, you know about him, that mumser bastard. Yeah, every, every time somebody's speeding in Plantation, it's my fault. Somehow I had something to do with it. 26 past 11 at 560 WQM. Are you a chief attacker in his hands? Does you have erection problems? Then you need BDIP. That's the Black Man's Diagnostic Intergalactic Penis Institute. On and on and to the break of dawn. And the beats don't stop. They bop, they bop, they bop, they bop, they bop, they bop, bop, you don't stop. Yes, BDIP, the Black Man's Intergalactic Penis Institute. Sometimes you want to go long and strong and you want to get the friction on. Listen up, my brothers and miscellaneous others. If you can't get your tally to whacker, if you can't get your up jump to boogie, to boogie de boogie de bang bang, call right now, toll free 1-800-MY-PENIS. That's 1-800-MYP-U-N-I-S. If you're Johnson, be giving out on you. You need BDIP now. Call today. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu negro. This one goes out to all the hoes. So what does that mean? He's not there? Talk about him on the air. He might be listening. Oh, Jeff Cohen, is, uh, he's not there? And He'll we call. Want lunch Maybe. Pizza well, if he doesn't call in the next five minutes, we're going to get lunch from someplace else, and then he won't get those great free plugs that we always give Jeff Cohen at the pizza law. We don't have time to potch you around here, okay? I mean, uh, you know, he's supposed to be on call. Oh, he's probably out getting laid. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing, Mr. O'Neill? Okay. Yeah, so um, I didn't get a chance to watch the news this morning, but I was listening to your show. And uh, you was talking about the lesbians and the, um, the faggots. So I would like to know why do why are what are what are they doing at Disney World? What are they doing? They're having a good time, just like everybody else. No, the purpose for the purpose. What are they, what are they doing there? Are they irrelevant? Are they what? Is there a relevant why they? Uh, Is there a relative? Right. Yeah, they're all uh, they're all related. Adam, <laughs> Steve, they're all related. They're all kin. The Ganta <laughs> Yeah. You know what? My input on that. What is that? That's nasty. Uh, I don't, I don't want. I'm, no, no offense to um every to order, the fags, yeah. Uh, no offense to the faggots and the lesbian, but damn, how could you feel comfortable with um the same sex, man? That's just stupid, man. Yeah. Not that I'm religious or whatever, but dang. But are you? But are you, you gay? You just don't get it, do you? I just don't get it. You're right. All right, All right then. Thank you very much. Hey, listen. Some of us don't get it enough either. <laughs> okay. He just don't get it because he'd be uh you know out of the loop, so to speak. He's out of the fruit loop. He don't get it. See, I always look at it this way. Who gives a crap? 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. And maybe he don't get it because maybe he'd be uh, ugly. You know, that could be it. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Yeah, hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I was up there this weekend with the kids and the wife. Oh, we're just overrun with Orlando stuff here today. All the stuff I talked about for an hour and a quarter, and all I want to talk about is Fag Day at Disney World. Yes, sir. Well, I've got to tell you, we got up there on Thursday, didn't even know anything was happening until Saturday. Right. And it wasn't even until Saturday night. It was a great weekend to go. All the rides empty. You know, it was great. It was great for the kids, and nobody cared. I'll the, tell ri- you. the rides were empty? Uh, it, well, it wasn't long. The, the, the waits were short. i uh, got to tell you, it was a good weekend to go. It just just ignore the rest, you know? Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was good. Just want to let you know, who really cares? It hey, was exactly. Fine. Who gives a crap? As long as everybody's exactly. having a good time. Everybody had a good time. No signs, no problems. It was it was a great time. Lovely. Thank you, sir. Hey, thanks, Neil. God Goodbye. bless you. See, he had a good time. No big deal. No big song and a dance. No, no, even protesting anymore. See, that's the way you do it. In the beginning, the glam carry on and do a big song and dance, and then they move on to bigger and better stuff. Look at that. One call on the board. When I didn't want to take any calls, when I was on that roller for an hour, there were 8 million calls on there, on and off, and they wouldn't wait. And now, uh, well, it's Monday, you know. That's why I went on for an hour and a quarter, because I had good stuff. You guys, you got nothing. 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Like I said, you get off that plane at MIA, and you walk through that jetway, and oh, all of a sudden, this sick, nauseous feeling overcomes you, and you say, oh, no, this can't possibly be happening to me. Especially last night, plane comes in at 10.30 from Toronto. And you go from gate G12 there, which is where that uh, plane always takes off and leaves from the same uh, uh, gate. And you have that long, long walk past the past the Cazzoli's pizza stand that nobody is ever manning, by the way, which that's not the real Cazzoli's pizza anyway. That stuff blows. Past the desolate. Everything is closed up. Now, can you even begin to conjure up in your mind what's going on out there at that airport at that hour of the night? 
at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night? Can you even begin in your wildest dreams? Could even Al Goldstein begin to imagine what's going on at MIA in the wee hours of the morning? 11, 11, 30, 2 in the morning? I mean, there everything is nailed shut. The concession stand, the magazine rack, everything is closed up. The only things that are open, I guess, are like the tea rooms. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Hey. Yes, sir. How you doing? Great. Yeah, did you read about uh, San Francisco? Uh, I think they're going to open up the bathhouses for the homos out there. For the homos, yeah. yeah. Why are you going? You going to San no, Francisco? I'm just telling you so you get the hell out of here. You complain mm-hmm. so much. Uh-huh. I'm not going. I'm staying here just to keep you happy. Give me something to do. <laughs> Anyways. You'd be psychotic if I left. Listen. Wouldn't you? Admit it. A friend of mine took his family out there, his wife and his kids to do Where? Uh-huh. To Disney, and he waited in line to get on a ride. Yeah. And he got on a ride, and what was there? It was two homos going at it. Yeah. It looked like you and George. Mm-hmm. It was me and George. He's a closet homo. He knows it. Is he? Well, he's he, Cuban. He, he's Cuban. He can't help it. I think and, and what about you? Are you in the closet or are you coming out? No. You're stepping one toe out? No. One I think it's a natural stick, a, stick your fist okay. up another man. Okay. Thank you. Up another man's. Rectum. That is, oh, that must have been the editor of New Times. Yeah, thanks very much for the great, uh, the, just the excellent timing too, by the way. The good stereotypes, that's good. Although I'll be honest with you, after I hear all this anal stuff that I hear from all these straight guys, that's all they want is. Rectum. That's it. That's all they want is that big <laughs> brown eye. Remember even Van Morrison had, remember that brown-eyed girl? We know what that song was about now. Back in those days, we were naive. Now we know what it was all about, the big brown eye. I'm not going to waste my time with any more of that. We did what? We did a 700-part series on that, on all these heterosexual guys that want to do their uh, girlfriends, their wives, or both in the... Wrecked them. And it just grossed my ass out. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil God. Yes, sir, speaking. Uh, Back in the middle of Deadsville, baby. Deadsville, this town is so freaking dead. Man, it's a good thing I killed that hour and a quarter. God only knows what I'm going to do today. Go ahead. You're not lying. My girlfriend and I were up in Disney World this weekend as well. And I'll tell you what, I'll take take 100,000 fags and lesbians uh, over uh, 100,000 snowy Germans any day of the week. Right. And uh, that's that's my input for you. We'll give you a warning when Kraut Day is coming, by the way. That's, I think, in the middle of July. All right. Okay. Take care. And when Spook Day coming, too, by the way. Oh, look out. You get spooked on those rides. Wait, because we already had a couple of dark-complected listeners who who are just upset. You don't understand about black people? They're obsessed with homosexuality. They're, they're just, uh, oh, God. Huh? They never got over Little Richard. I think that was a hard, tough cross for them to bear. They couldn't bear it. Drugs and rock and roll made him gay, though. Is that what it was? That's what he said. Until he found the Lord. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Now we want your calls. Now we're trying to build a little momentum here on the phone. And have they got anything? No. No. All they got is a bunch of fags up in Orlando. Well, good for them is what I say. Oh! To the fags, okay? We're coming out, and if you don't like it, blow it out your ass, okay? Like Sally would say. Get up right, because you seem to be obsessed with that anyway. Obsessed with that evil, disease-breeding brown eye. I mean, you talk about calling the uh, the pot calling the kettle puce. Man. Call from men. Well, when you come to my house, every time you have to use the toilet, and yeah, that's fine. But when you're done, you always see you in the house. A very special gift to you. That's a pride. Who when you wrap your ass, you can show a little glass and just remember to blush. What you pull for a girl to be fucked when you get it full? But when it's my turn to lose the seat, your number ain't turned out. You want to see? You took a up the car, but I don't think they broke it hard. Just remember to fuck.
because then I can really have a good time. Oh, I'm sorry. 16 till noon at 560 WQM. Now, what's the story? We talking to our good, close, personal friend, Brad, and getting lunch today? Because, like I was just telling our protege here, that's what it's all about. Free lunch. Oh! Free food. That's what being in the radio business is all about. If you can't get paid a lot, at least eat a lot of free food. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a lady in Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Hi, how are you, Neil? Great. Good. Listen, I got a problem. I want to complain about gay Disney and all the lesbians. They're so ugly, man. What's going on over there? Yeah, you're right. The dykes are pretty ugly most Yeah, of them. they are so ugly. They're horrendous. Mm-hmm. What's going on with that? Yeah, never thought about that. I don't pay too much attention to them. Really? No. I don't pay I'm not thinking of the truck drivers. Yeah, I mean, you know, what the hell is this? I mean, I'm an attractive lesbian from Miami, and I was yeah. expected to see, you know, get a date out there, you know, maybe get lucky, and it's like right. truck drivers all over the place. Oh, God. Diesel bikes. Diesel bikes. Thank you. Okay, I, I think if you check out the LPGA tournament next weekend, I think you might get lucky <laughs> over there. <laughs> I think so. You all might right, spot a hole in one. Okay, sweetheart, good luck. Five six seven oh five sixty. We got two calls on the board. It's a deadly Monday. Like I said, thank God. Thank God for that hour and a quarter monologue. Well, I haven't done that in a long time. I'm going to start doing that every Monday. I'll come in with four hours worth of crap. I haven't even got to the guy with the uh, French fries and the mayonnaise yet. The article from Montreal that somebody faxed me. I'll get to that, obviously. Here is uh, Miami. Hello. Uh, Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, Neil. Yeah, I'd like to complain about this idiot, Bill Clement. Uh, Yesterday they they were showing on the classic sports channel the Stanley Cup hockey games. And they were showing the Pittsburgh Chicago game four of mm-hmm. ninety two. Right. Which by the way Hashik played with Belfort. Right. Which, which was really interesting. Mm-hmm. And it was obvious the game was played at Chicago Stadium. And at least ten times he would say, Well, let's go back to the Igloo now where Chicago is playing Pittsburgh. I mean it was just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, he was sitting there with that goofball Brian Engblum. Oh, another figure skater. Uh, another idiot. Mm-hmm. And you know, last week I know that, you know, you think that uh, the stars are it's like boring watching them. They are. Uh, it's it inducing. It, it's true because they do play great defense. And I, I didn't see that last game, but boy, I guess I lucked out. I was on a plane Friday night, so I didn't see it. But man, I read all about that the next day in the Toronto papers. They just carved them both oh, in the ass. They but said, I will say that that Madonna, oh, can he play hockey? Yeah. Uh, both ways too. I mean, often goes Indy, both ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's I, what I heard. So you're gonna root for Buffalo or? or? I, I, you know, something. I'm, I'm very anxious for them to get it over with. For as far as I'm concerned, it's all over. Get it over with. I, I can't root for Buffalo. You know, it's funny because Buffalo was my fourth favorite team. You know, the Leafs, the uh, Panthers, the Penguins, and then Buffalo. I got to like Buffalo because I enjoy Rick Jenner Red because they got a nice team. You know, and a lot of ex Panthers on there. But this Hashik man with that acting routine of his that he did in the Leafs series. I know some people think it's sour grapes, but his overacting. I mean, this guy should be doing 20 years for overacting. I, I can't stand it. A- anytime anybody gets within 10 feet of him, he's uh, throwing his gloves up in the air and he's falling down. I, uh, you know, a guy that's got his talent doesn't need to do that crap. That's true. Well, I guess go stars then. I say uh, get it over with guys. Four, four straight. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Neil. Four straight. Sweep them off the uh, goddamn ice. Get them out of here. One call left on the board. Boy, it's a good thing I got that music queued up, you know? Yeah, it's a good thing I got that ready to go because it's going to be a long two hours and 12 minutes here. Greg Reed's got a good haircut today, by the way. Oh! And his wife says she doesn't hate me like poison. You see, people don't understand. This is a radio show. Some spit called here one day last week. Starts a song and a dance about Greg likes you, but his wife hates you. And, I, and so I, I you know, run with it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You get a little mileage out of it. And uh, right away, she's nervous and paranoid. I know she doesn't hate me. Why should she hate me? Just because I said her husband doesn't know crap and is a good guy. But, uh, you know, he is a good guy. He just doesn't know anything about this business. We all know that. And just because I won't eat at Ruth Chris with them anymore, I don't, I don't know. I'm just funny about that. I'll buy my own meals at Ruth Chris. You know what I'm saying? You follow what I'm saying? Does that make me a bad guy? Uh, no. See? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I'm not going to say anything until I get a bunch of calls on here. I'm not. I got two on there now, which I could take right now. But I had I, we had a lot of momentum building on the phone when I didn't want it to be. I didn't want them to be calling. In other words, I hadn't given the number out. I hadn't given the signal. And do we have one? See what I tell you about plantation? Was I right? Uh-huh. Or was I right? I don't have one person in plantation. How many people in plantation? Two, three hundred thousand at least. Pretty big city. I think next to Fort Lauderdale, plantation is probably the uh, what biggest city in uh, Broward. Hollywood, maybe, maybe Hollywood's number two. Which is bigger, Hollywood or plant? Well, at least the people in plantation, most of us are still alive. Hollywood's got a lot of you know numbers, but most of them are dead. Sorry, ma. I mean, you know, dead people in Hollywood. 
And out of all those people in Plantation, is there one that likes this show? No. One that will take the time to call and say, you're wrong. GEF and uh, Tom Jick is thinking of Sun Sentinel yesterday doesn't represent Plantation. I think he does. I think the chief over there has got them all brainwashed. I think he's made it illegal to listen to the Rogers show on Plantation, is what I think. Look at, look at that. Nothing. Is that it? Is that a plantation call? I'm wait. I'm waiting. Oh, that's from Kendall. That's not even close. Mobile in, in. I'm waiting. I'm watching the screen here to see where this is going to be. This is this is a shocker to me. I may have to move. You know what? <clears throat> I'm not thinking about moving. I'm over to a place where they like me, like Sunrise. Not that far. It's not a long move. And I'll tell you one thing in Sunrise, they're a hell of a lot more lenient, like on satellite dishes and stuff like that. They don't ruin your life like they do in Plantation with all those codes and all those other. Oh, mobile in Plantation? Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm calling. I am now in Plantation. Yeah, I live in Plantation. You know, oh, you do live in Plantation. Yes. Okay. And I listen to you, you all it. day, every day. And, yes, I like your show. And I did see the article. I was going to call you this morning, but now I had a call. Right. And uh, I agree with the article that, yeah, you're you're a guy to listen to. You agree with Tom Jicken? Yeah. Well, thank I God definitely for that. disagree with the person who wrote the... Uh, GEF, the spineless right. cowards. How come we don't have the name there from GEF? I'm going to get that name from Tom Jicka, and we're going to go hunt them down at their house and uh, grill them for about two, three hours. But talking about plantation, i got to ask you something. Did you see that the city of Plantation is holding the 4th of July parties and parades on July 3rd because July 4th is a Sunday? No. They're doing the parade on Saturday morning and the fireworks on Saturday night because... The city of Plantation doesn't do anything on Sundays. Really? Is that amazing? Why is that? Because it's uh, too religious or because they're well, just too goddamn yeah, lazy? It's a non-Jewish uh, religious day, you know? Yeah. Everybody else doesn't matter. It's the Goyim that matter. There it is. Oh, yeah. Well, the Goyim run Plantation. You know that. Well, well we thought once the old mayor got out of there that it was going to change a little bit. But, uh, there are no Jews in Plantation. You and, I are the o- you and I are the only Jews in Plantation. Don't you know that? Uh, I don't know about that. There seems to be an awful oh, lot. Right. Yeah. But, uh, and uh, yeah. and let's see, my old neighbor, uh, let's see, the Teslers, they're uh, Jewish. They're over there in uh, Jacaranda. And uh, uh-huh. what's his name, uh, Sean and his family? What is their name, uh, Sean, uh, whatever their name is, the, the uh-huh. dentist. Yeah, so so far i got about six Jews in Plantation. Uh-huh. I'm going to well, tell you, sir, I'm going to tell you right now. Next Pesach, we're closing the city down, and we're going to have a goddamn parade all over Plantation. There you go, right in front of City Hall. Exactly, just for equal time. Okay, Neil, thanks God bless you, and tell the chief he's a piece of crap, by the way, the Plantation chief. He's going to condition us to drive and save. Yeah, condition this, okay, you jackass. What is their name? The uh, the dentist. I can't think of that. That's embarrassing. So there's a call from Plantation. Nice going, sir. Oh! Make me feel a little bit better. See, if we had any audience in Plantation, these phones would be wherever your line would have lit up, you know? One. There was one. And that was it. And he Oy. was Jewish. I want to hear from a goy in plantation. That's what I want to hear from a Gentile, a non-Jew. Now this is really pushing it, okay? I'll get it. QAM. WQAM. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, listener from plantation. Are you a Gentile? Uh, actually, I'm a uh, Reformed Jew. Oh uh, well. Oh, non- that's close. A non-practicing. Oh, well, that's that's close. Now we're getting close. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, there's one. Boy, are they slow in plantation? They are so slow. These lines should be smoking, smoldering. I think the ratings were right. I think we're F, uh, FOB, whatever that means. I think we're out of business. WQAM. That was a line checker. WQAM. Hi, I'm a go in plantation. All right. Are you sure? I'm positive. Did you check? I'm not in plantation right now, but that's where I live. But you live in plantation. Yes, sir. And you listen to this show? Uh, whenever I'm working, yep. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Anything else I can do for you? That, I think that'll do it. All right, then. And maybe a couple of donuts to go. Have a great day. You too. Okay, there you go. See how simple that was? It only, it only took me, what, 20 minutes to do that? That goes to show you the power of this radio station, <laughs> the power of this show that we used to have. Thank God for our buddy Brad over at Tony's that we're at least getting one last free lunch today. Thank God for that. And by the way, you're welcome, Kimba. I'm just giving him a you're welcome for that free lunch he got from our good friend at the sub-center, from our good buddy over there, Chuck. Any excuse I got to give Chuck a plug at the sub-center, I always give him because he's been great to us, right? The whole station here at the, uh, what are the, GBS, whatever this is, 
<laughs> well, see, I saw Greg in here this morning. I get confused because he's always got that confused look on his face. He's got like one finger in his nose and one in his rectum. You know, like, uh, you know, in fact, every time I see Greg, I think, yeah, yeah that, that's immediately what comes to mind. Good guy, but uh, yeah. I, that, I mean, if you looked up Greg Reed in the dictionary, you would see yeah. right next to it. Good guy, but a little, uh, I don't know what the word is. I'll think of it. Here's a mobile in Kendall. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Great. Okay. First of all, I want to start off by saying I'm a very big fan of yours. Listen to you every day and half the year. Okay? Great. God bless but you, I, sir. Yes, I just have one yeah. issue to bring up with okay, maybe please. a question that my girlfriend asked me this week, and I said, you know what, i got to ask you. Okay. okay. If you're against religion, which I think you have every right to, and I, to be honest with you, I agree with you on a lot of your issues on religion. I'm not against I, religion. I'm just against people using it as a weapon. Now, you can believe whatever crap you want. Don't shove it down people's throats. Right. right? Don't That's shove right. it down people's throats unless you're serious. Okay, then why should homosexuality be shoved down people's throats, so to speak? Who's shoving it down your throat? Well, let's say uh, gay day. Why Why should people that are straight that want to take their children to Disney World yeah. be subjected to, to having what? homosexuality shoved down their throat? Well, who's shoving it down their throat? Are they physically shoving it down their throat like a kielbasa? I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, what I'm saying is because someone in a gay sex... Well, if someone comes from Boston yeah. and brings their family... Well, I know there's, no, know fags. I know there's no fags in Boston, sir. Believe me, I lived there for oh, a few yeah, years. Right. I can tell you that. I'm there's no fags in Boston. Oh, yeah, right. That's why they had to close down the combat zone. It was just a little bit out of hand, so to speak. <laughs> and my second question was, well, well, we'll just jump off of that. But that's what she said to me, and I didn't have an answer That's for what her, she so said? I... Let's jump off of that? Okay. Okay, yeah, so to speak. Um, I called you when I got back from Vegas because you wanted to know about Venetia, and I ran, and I went ahead, and I called you real quick, and I told you that I walked in, but the pool wasn't ready. And right. the top. Did you get a chance to see it? No, I just drove by, but I, we didn't get a chance to go in. Did you see Bellagio? I've already been in there. I was there when oh, it opened. Been in there? Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was, uh, you know, it was... Uh, a little too cold, maybe. I, I don't. Yeah, it didn't have any uh, personality of its own. I mean, it, fancy, it's but... pretty, but you, like I said when I was there, you could you stand in the middle of that place and you look around, and it was generic. You, I mean, you know, I guess when you go back at the paintings, if you're into the art and all of that stuff, but if you're in the middle of the casino, you look around, it could be any place. You know, it just uh, right. there are too many places that are like the same now. I hear you. You know, I read a story, something about that Donald Trump was trying to block the guy that build the Bellagio to build a place in Atlantic City or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it was going to compete against his hotels or Steve something Wynn. like that. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Tough, tough crap. You know, don't, don't you wish you, you had their problems, huh? Yeah, I know. Donald Trump is just, I mean, the guy's, uh, talk about uh, an ego. I mean, Jesus, this guy, uh, you know, you saw him landing at the racetrack at the Belmont this weekend. You know, he lands in his helicopter. Oh, Donald Trump has arrived. Like, yeah. you know, like now the race can begin. You know yeah, what you, mean? Can, you can almost smell it right over the TV. Exactly. Okay, pal. Um, Neil, great. can I call somebody a douchebag, please? Go ahead. Uh, Bert and Mario, two uh, guinea douchebags. Okay. Thanks, Neil. You can almost like I said, smell it. It's 11.57 at 5.60 WQAM. Boy, is the air working in here or what? Or is I got, like, bugs on my head? It's not working? I feel like my hair is it's warm this morning, which uh, oh, I that noticed that it well. is starting to warm up again. It's not working too good. I should have told Greg that when he was in here. As soon as he came in here and I said the air ain't working too good, he went. Yeah. Hey, if you want to take control of your future, why don't you get out of that job on a road to nowhere and train yourself for a career, a real one? With <laughs> Stop that in the middle. I can't. I can't let it finish because I'm so distraught over what you just told me. You know, it's not bad enough. I guess when you're an arrogant prick, I guess when you're an arrogant prick like Sam, who's uh, you know got the naked pictures of the boss and can basically do whatever you want, you can walk around with that kind of a goddamn attitude. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. That's the worst. If they were dropping nuclear weapons on Syracuse right now, it wouldn't be as bad as what you just told me. 
We order lunch from our good friend Brad over at Tony's, okay? Because Jeff Cohen is out getting laid somewhere. Pizza Loft's off the list today, okay? And Chuck was just here on Friday, which we don't want to overdo it with him because he helped out uh, Kimba Bull Camper on the Saturday and, uh, you know, the whole deal. He's been great to us. So let's not overdo it. Don't push a good thing too far. So we get our friend uh, Brad over at Tony's. He's sending us a nice lunch today, okay? Pizzas and whatever else we want. They got great subs and soup. It's a good place. I just ordered a bunch of pizza. Yeah. Enough for everybody. So Sam sticks his nose in here. Sam, the uh, award winner of the What Did I Do for uh, This Paycheck Contest. Any payday you pick, by the way, he's still the winner. And he sticks his head in the door here. I thought he had something uh, like about promotions going on. I thought maybe he was doing some work. <laughs> Besides those lovely uh, blue and yellow bumper stickers, by the way, that suck. And he asked George, what do you guys got anything coming for lunch? He was hoping for Chuck's. Here's one for you. <laughs> Up Chuck, okay? Up Chuck. All over your desk. All over your pukey body, okay? Mr. Uh, Hotshot. And by the way, if Enrique is listening, don't tell this guy anything, okay? Because he's a storyteller. Loose lips sink ships. Just keep that in mind, Enrique. This guy, pop, 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 you know, try to impress everybody. I suppose I shouldn't say that the nephew is also... Uh... Right on in there. Yes, you should. In the green Yes, you ribbon. should, okay? They're both in there sucking it, okay? And so George tells him we got all these pizzas coming from uh, Tony's, enough for everybody. Oh, well, first he uh, distraught that it's not from Chuck's, that's number one. And number two, where are you getting it from? How about if we have it, like, tested and certified at the door before we bring it in to see if it's up to your standards, mister? How's that, huh? To see if it's up to your highfalutin standards. Maybe, maybe the boss can take those two to Roots, Chris. Okay, for a free meal. Although I hope at least maybe the nephew might bathe and uh, clean up his act a little bit before they would let him in there. So to make a long story short, what we got coming today, he turns his nose up at it, like uh, it ain't up to their exacting standards. Well, you know what? That's good for us because that means more for us and less for you. You know what I'm saying, Sam? You piece of crap. Go back to Venezuela. And by the way, the guys on a plane say you're full of crap and they hate you like poison. The guys that got hassled by the authorities down there, they say you're full of crap. And just because you kept throwing around Enrique's name down there and Ricky Martin or whatever it is, your faggy friend and uh, Ricky Martin, who's still looking La Pinga Loca, 5670560. Oh, you know, let me ask you this. Are we ever giving lunch to him again, those two in there? Are they ever getting lunch again from us? No. No. What? 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 I wouldn't be surprised if they're sucking our free water, too, from the Culligan man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah that wouldn't shock me either. Freeloading do-nothings. How about going out there and doing it in the van again and doing another one of those great uh, hit, uh, Neely hit, whatever the hell they call that? Yeah. Where they're giving away crap that nobody wants so they can please, uh, you know, make up for promises they made to people that they have no business promising. Chris Reed has stomach problems. That's why he he's was, got uh, stomach problems. I got stomach problems. <laughs> Just hearing about this story, okay? I mean, you talk about chutzpah, man. What do you got coming for lunch today? Is it free and uh, where is it from? And is it up to our standards? Boy, does he have a lot of chutzpah. God. Man, arrogant prick, okay? That's you, Sam. Arrogant, obnoxious prick. One of the untouchables, of course. See, one thing about the untouchables. Who we got? And I and uh, Gary Sarner I'm going to leave out because actually Gary's not all that bad. Once you get to understand him, he can't help himself. He's a loser, but he's okay. But you got Sam and the nephew and screw Ann there, okay? The untouchable. Oh, yeah, I know. You got something in your stomach, okay? That's what happens when you keep bending down on the floor and Sam keeps uh, sneaking up behind you. You wind up with something in your stomach. A miracle of modern science we got here. That's right. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. What's happening, bro? What is it? Happening, man. Oh, there he is. I can barely hear this guy. Maybe it's because I got this fan turned up so loud. Can you hear me now, dude? Yeah, I hear you. Cool. Hey, I haven't called you in a while, but I want to ask you a question. I know, like, because you're outwardly gay and everything. I'm outwardly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. No. You're gay. You don't make any, you any words about it. Inwardly, you're straight. I don't mince. No, but I don't mince. Inwardly, you're gay, too. Uh -huh. But, dude, when you're, like, like out, like, in your social life, does, like, your celebrity status, does, like, get you, like, laid more? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Like in the homosexual life. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, does it work like the hetero world? Yo, sure. I Come got on, guys I'm... I got guys right now just uh, lapping at my feet. Just Come on, waiting, I'm serious, bro. Just waiting for me to get out of the air. No, I'm serious. No. no. Not at all? No. Come on. No. No. Oh, man. I can't believe that. 
Well, okay. Well, then yes, it does. In fact, I just got I just got uh, done twice in the last fifteen minutes while I'm sitting here during the commercial breaks. You feel better now? Yeah. Good. All these people that are so worried about everybody else's knob, man, it's just it's unbelievable. It's incredible. All so worried about are you getting this? And and the only people who are worried about stuff like that are guys who aren't getting any themselves. I've always said that. And you know something? Absolutely correct, sir. No question about it. I don't give a crap uh, how much action anybody else is getting. Couldn't care less. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. If this pot's not good. It's great. Sorry, we're not getting your good luck today, Sam. By the way, yeah. Load out your ass. They wouldn't let them back into this way. Do they curse my name? Yes. If I parted in heaven, would I stand the shame? If I parted in heaven, would the run she Send me straight to hell, or can anybody smell up in heaven? Does gas act? Does it linger in heaven? Yes. Would you be ashamed to pull my finger in heaven? I'll know. When the fat lady sings, cause I'll be the one who brings tears to heaven, cause I know I'll be the one who brings oh! tears to heaven. 15 at 560 WQM. It's just amazing to me how obsessed and preoccupied the audience is with homosexuality. It's like like a bulletin, like it just uh, landed on the planet, like it's something new, and they don't understand it, and they don't get it. And am I getting a lot? And am I doing this one? And on. I mean, just tragic, sad. Nice going, Doug Swallow. I said, just keep it up, okay? Drive all those other assholes right out of there, all right? We'll just take the whole place over, as if we already haven't. Hey, someday they might actually have to hire a straight guy up in uh, Disney, you know? Although I doubt it. Not too soon. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the mobile one line. Here's Sonny Isles. Hello. There's no fags in Disney World. Yeah. Okay, great. Mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Yeah, how you doing, Neil? Yes, sir. I was going to I was going to go up to Disney World with my family, uh, but Oh. You know, I've got two boys, one's 14 and one's 16, and, uh-huh. and I know how them, you know, them homosexuals like to ogle them young boys. Oh, yeah. And, and uh-huh. plus, you know, I raised them to be religious. Yeah. And and I don't think, you know, hobnobbing with a bunch of homosexuals. Yeah, like like your priest, right, like, like the family priest. In the church, you know? Uh-huh. So that's one of the reasons we didn't go up there. Yeah, good. They don't want no straight assholes like you up there anyway. No, I don't want to hang around with a bunch of fags like you up there either. Right. You know? Good. We'll I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you know your place. Good. Stay there. 567 oh, 0560, pound 560 on the mobile one line. Probably a pedophile. Sounds like it to me. Here's a mobile implantation. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I, can't believe, I can't believe these people today. Uh, but there are a few Gentiles up here in plantation. I, I'm a 52 year old. Oh, there's a lot of Gentiles in plantation. Yeah, I'm a We're 52 year old. Yeah, I'm a 52 year old, even circumcised Gentile in plantation. Yeah. From, from Western Kentucky. All right. So how about that? But anyway, I just want to call in and let you know there are a few of us up here. Okay, great. Have a great uh, whatever it Thanks. is. Thanks. Okay, right. see you. Okay, there you go. A guy from Plantation. Let's hear it oh! from him. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. Faggot, faggot, faggot. I mean, talk about a one pony town, man. As soon as they heard that the fags were having a good time up at Disney World and nobody was having a nervous breakdown and even the Glam weren't protesting anymore, all of a sudden it destroyed their whole week. Not just their day, it ruined their whole week. And then when Doug Swallow called in, that was just pushed them over the edge. That was a little more than they could handle, if you pardon that expression. When they heard Doug Swallow like that. Yeah. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. What about all this other stuff? Does anybody care about that Belmont? No. Does anybody care about uh, none of that stuff? And about how God? Uh, see, there you go again with that God stuff. If God would have wanted us to win today, uh, well, how can people say these things? Just like that girl uh, last week with that business about she took a bullet for Jesus. I mean, the stuff that people say because their condition. Like I said, like I hit it right on the goddamn head a week ago Friday, right here on this show. I hit it right on the head. What's in the brains of most people in this country, somebody else put it there. Not something that they come to the conclusion of because they gave some careful thought and investigation and study for like five seconds or longer, but because somebody else told them so. So, oh, okay, whatever you say. She took a bullet for Jesus, and if God would have wanted us to win the race, we would have won the race because God, uh, you know, likes the favorites. There's some crap like that. Maybe he was betting uh, Keeneland at the time and we didn't have his eye on Belmont. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe God took up harness racing instead because, God, we need a prayer. Here's uh, Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. It's uh, Veggie from Boca. How you doing? Oh, God. 5670560 oh, pound. Are we desperate today or what? Uh-huh. I mean, talk about scraping the bottle of, the, the bottle of uh, your thing. Veggie from Boca. Am I going to talk to him? No. No way. No way, Jose. If I had no calls the whole four hours, I would sit here before I would talk to Veggie from... I would talk to Andy from Hollywood before I'd talk to Veggie from Boca. And I'd rather be dead before I'd talk to Andy from Hollywood. Here's a mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Great. Hey, when ABC asked uh, Humper uh, his picks for the Belmont, didn't yeah. he not skirt the issue? No, he did not. He picked charismatic. Are you, oh, really? Yeah. I thought he was kind of like playing it off, you know, because he was so close on his other two picks. Yeah. yeah uh, I don't know. Uh, let me ask you, do you pick Lemon Drop Kid? Hey, actually, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> I had it in a trifecta, yeah. but I didn't have the right thing. Uh-huh. I like Scotty Schulhofer, and Jose Santos is a real good jockey. Yeah, right. That's so easy to say right now. You know, Kent DeSormo is a good jockey, jockey, too. His horse wasn't anywhere. And Jerry <laughs> Bailey's a good horse, too, and she's uh, puking her guts out the Philly. Yeah, that, that Philly ran out too fast, and yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. It was a good race. What Chris Antley did was was really rewarding. I mean, people really that don't. I understand. thought it was a good race. I thought it was a terrible race. And I think what it shows that people don't want to talk about is how mediocre the crop of three year olds were this year. They were all crap. Well, uh-huh. that's what everybody's saying. But it was five wide coming down the stretch. You didn't know who had it. Then you know after the fact, you know Crappy who race. had it. But yeah, can I call somebody a douchebag? Uh, John Roberts and any Elvis impersonators are a bunch of douchebags. Okay. Take it. In. Easy. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. So our lunch isn't up to the standards for Sam today. So Sam's walking around there with his nose up in the air. Mr. Pampered spoiled like some kind of a rotten brat kid, Sam. Like I said, who along with about a half a dozen other people in this building got naked pictures of the boss. I shouldn't have said that right at lunchtime. Here's the Gables. Hello. What's up, Neil? Yes, sir. How are you? Great. Uh Disney employee uh, on vacation in the Gables. Uh huh. And I'll tell you something. Uh, if it wasn't for those pillow biters out there, no one would be spending money. That's right. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Wayne Lucas for breaking down another horse. Uh, he's just—he's uh, an expert at it. Nobody can break him down like Wayne. Nobody can, my friend. Yeah. If, if you put it down on paper and take a look at who's done it, he's done it the worst. But just keep one thing in mind: if the Lord would have wanted the horse not to break down, he wouldn't have broke down. <laughs> and uh, all right, my man. Okay, like they say at the track, watch your backside. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we heard from Doug Swallow today, and boy, the heterosexuals are rattling their spears, they're rattling their cages, they're looking at their ladies. Wreck them. I mean, they're just uh, psychotic now. They're getting all whipped up about the big brown <laughs> eye. Well, it's about time you stop spreading that propaganda. That's nothing but a breeder of disease, okay? Why do you think that everything from that part of the body is outgoing? Do you understand? <laughs> outgoing. Not ingoing. Outgoing. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Just keep in mind an old fag like me told you that. I take all the crap for that. In the meantime, I'm surrounded by a bunch of brown-eyed sniffer uh, heterosexuals here. All they know about. I said sniffers. I didn't even say the right, the worst part. Okay, I didn't even get the, my licks in on the other part of it. Tastes like a penny. Yeah. Uh huh. 
and it smells like <laughs> crap. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hi, God. Yes, sir. Speaking. Are you gay if you let your girlfriend pack you with the sap on? Yes. Really? Uh huh. Well. Okay. Welcome to the club. See you at Disney tomorrow. See it's at crushed. Fan- see at Fantasyland. I mean, what kind of a self-respecting guy lets a girl strap one on, huh? Especially a big black one like that one we got up there. And that one keeps moving around, too, by the way, all by itself. It's very popular. It, yeah, it, it's getting a lot of action around here. We heard that Joe Costello was uh, using it this morning. I don't want to say how or where, but, of course, he's Italian. 5670560, oh, which is right next to Greece, and pound 560 on a mobile one line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello? Neil. Yes, sir. What the hell happened to Manaphy? What happened to what? Manaphy. Ma- Manaphy? Yeah. He's still running. And you know something, Pat Day, it's a good point. What happened to him, Pat Day, of course, who's got the direct bat line to God. He couldn't win any of the three races. Must have called the wrong number. 5670560 oh, was a crappy race, and all these people are trying to make it interesting. There was nothing interesting about it. It was tragedy. And, of course, Hank was there, and he was on the telecast, so I'm sure it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say today at 2 o'clock from Shula's, or like shortly after 2. And, and uh, Corey Saban starts today, right? In Fort Myers. Corey's first day today on Channel 4 in Fort Myers. Oh! Wish we knew what time, but of course we don't. Doing the news over there as he moves into the real world of what's really going on as opposed to the sports fantasy that this station is obsessed with like some kind of a neurotic illness. Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, like Veggie from Boca? Meaning what? Are you his agent? No. I'm just curious to why you don't He's like just him. a chronic. He was a chronic for about 100 years, and we finally got rid of him, and now he wants to make a comeback. Oh, really? Because, no, he's been a long-time listener. Yeah. Oh, you really like we him? We like him as a listener. We just don't like him as a caller. But talk to him. He's very, very... Talk, are you Are you his agent? <laughs> no. Are you his boyfriend? He has a <laughs> wife, you know. Yeah, I know. And he's pushing oh, posies. So, so, in other words, you know him, huh? Oh, he has a wife, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know him very well. Yeah, well, give him a message for me, okay? Tell him to uh, buzz off. Is this incredible? We have callers who have agents. Callers who have friends representing them, calling us, begging us to talk to them. Are we going to talk to them? No. No. Wish you nothing but the best, Veggie, with your fruit stand or whatever you got going, you and your lovely wife. He has a wife, you know. And we still don't care, okay? We don't want to talk to you. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the mobile one line. Let's do something scintillating like Mandich. You know, I love Mandich. I don't have to tell you that. And he actually even made a comment about Tommy Brady being hung like a moose or something on uh, Friday as I was going out the door for my benefit. But to show you how desperate things are, Mad Dog does a thing there, which I got a fax about this morning, and for once the uh, chronic faxers are right. Four hours on uh, people that you've gotten autographs from or got uh, shined on, autographs, athletes. I mean, is that desperate? Is that, uh, Uh huh? huh? Does that tell you how desperate this audience is for material? That that's the kind of thing we have to resort to? Although he did say teat several times. That was good. I enjoyed that. How come How come he can say it the way he says it, and I got to say teats? What is that all about, huh? I think it must be uh, something. The FCC must be anti-semantic. Uh-huh. That must be it. Twenty-six past noon at five sixty WQAM. Oh God, Neil! New on Canine Records. It's that Mexican Chihuahua from the Taco Bell commercials, singing like you've never heard him before. Which, of course, you haven't heard him sing like this before because this is the first time he's ever sung. Today's hot hit. Licking my butt and taking a nap. Oh, this sweetest thing. The Taco Bell dog sings today's hot hits. Gives you all the big hits you love. Sung by a little dog you can uh, put up with most of the time. I like to bark. So here I go again. I'm going to bark until the neighbors call. I like to bark. So here I go again. I'm going to drive you up the wall. Arr, 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 arr. That little Taco Bell dog has many moods. And you'll hear him express them all right here. Walking time starts about the time that my bladder can't hold anymore. Oh, yeah, we, I gotta be walking time. You better find the leash before I got to right on your floor. Oh, I can't hold myself the whole day long. That is why your carpet smells so strong. Oh. The Taco Bell dog sings today's hot hits. It's guaranteed to be hotter than that last big beef burrito you ordered at the drive-thru. 
Okay, it's 1231 at 560 WQM. Sam is on our list, by the way. He's out. You know, when it comes to future meals, I want to make sure I don't want anybody in this building to allow him to have, like, even a crumb, anything. The nephew, he's okay. We don't we don't uh, dislike the nephew. He's all right. He can't help himself. He just smells bad. But, Sam, that's another story. This is a man. He, he just drove a dagger through his own heart today. He uh, There was an act of self-immolation. I'm telling you. WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, can I say something to Neil? George is busy sticking pins into our Sam douchebag uh, voodoo doll. Go ahead, sir. Speaking. Hi, how you doing, Neil? Great. Hey, I just wanted to make a comment. I've never heard such a stupid question as that guy before, asking if, if my girlfriend sticks a, uh, a dildo up my ass. Rectum, and, and yeah. I, yeah, am I, am I gay? Uh-huh. Come on, buddy, you're right on the verge. You might as well be doing Frederic down at your local hair salon. He's, he's over the edge. You know, I mean, that's the stupidest question. And as far and as the best these, part of it is, his girlfriend's name is Harry. Yeah, I bet. I uh-huh. bet it is. And then the best thing is, is, you know, getting on with all this God stuff that goes on. You know what a real disgrace is to me? What is that? It's for? watching all of these football players, after they score a touchdown, getting mm-hmm. down on one knee, making yeah. the Father, Son, Holy Spirit right. deal, right. and they're out blowing a four or five grams up their nose four hours later. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a disgrace. God only knows what they're blowing. You know. Okay. God bless <laughs> you, sir. Have a great day. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. All, all these, uh, you know, like I've always told you, the more religious they claim to be, the Reggie Whites of the world, all these are professional bigots. Oh, yeah, the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me that, and the Lord told me to retire. Well, I guess maybe one more year because I'd be needing the money, but the Lord, yeah. Uh, just cut the crap already, okay? Just if you want to get on your knees, do some praying, okay, instead of whatever else you're doing. Cut the crap. You're not fooling anybody. It's like a, like a pastime, like we have a whole segment of this society of professional goody-goody. Uh, all they do is spend all their time telling us how wonderful they are and how all the, all the rest of us are going to burn in hell. God, it's going to be so busy down there. Man, it's going to be crowded as hell. 5670560, oh, maybe that's where the expression came from, you think? That might be it. Uh-huh. 5670560, oh, as we continue searching for the uh, caller today that's got the real answer to the musical question, what are these people going to grow up? Do you think they're ever going to grow up? No. No. And you want to know why they're not going to grow up? Because that's not the American effing way, man. Just being juvenile and living in the Stone Age and acting like, uh, what's that all about? That's the American way. Especially all you darkies out there. What What is it with you guys, huh? What is it? Are you embarrassed the fact that you got all these fags in the NFL that we all know about them? Like that one year that the Redskins had more fags on the team than they had, and that's when they were good too, by the way. That's what certain quarterbacks in the league tell you. You want to have a good team, you got to have enough of uh, those uh, pickle puffers on there. That's what they said. Here's a lady in Boca. Hello. Lady in Boca. Oh, hi. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm the daughter of your Dutch admirer. Yes. And I was waiting with the cheese fondue for you when you were in Amsterdam, but you never came by. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Did you find some nice restaurants? Uh, no. On the list I gave you. No, I, I, I'll, we'll check it out this year. Oh. We're going back soon. Okay. Will you be there in August? Uh, at the end, yeah. Okay, because at the beginning we have a gay parade the first weekend of no, August. I don't want to be there for that, no. Oh, okay. There's enough gay people there on any ordinary day without going for the parade. Okay. I was there on Queen's Day this, uh, you know. In, yeah. in April, and we just I would never do it again. Just too many people. Yeah, but it's fun. It's, a lot of nice people there. A lot of what? There's a lot of nice people well, there. I thought you said a lot of white people. Yeah, there were a lot of white people. And nice. And nice, yeah. A lot of nice white people. Well, have fun. You go next time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Dr. Bell. There's nothing like Amsterdam, baby. That's where you have a good time. And like I said, there were a lot of nice uh, white people. Five, six, Just like going to the MGM Grand, a lot of nice white people. Just like Toronto this weekend, a lot of nice uh, white people. And then, of course, my guy would have changed there. From the from wherever he is, did we ever decide about that? Pakistanis, Indians, what do we call them? Easterners, barbarians. No, they're actually very nice people. Those people from Pakistan, they drive a hell of a cab too. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the mobile one line. Our poll question today is: If you get in the cab at the airport, would you rather have the driver be a Pakistani or a Haitian? Oh. Here's plantation rhymes with Haitian. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Pretty good, sir. Terrific. Anyway, um, I wanted to find out why in the uh, how should I put this? You know, I don't, I can't understand all these homophobic bastards out here. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm straight. I'm, I'm straight. I have nothing wrong with these people who are gay or lesbian. I, yeah. I never had a problem with it at all. Yeah. You know the way I look at it. Hey, 
You know, we all got to learn. I mean, who, who gives a crap? Why are these people so obsessed? Why? I just mentioned the thing at Disney World, and we had a call from that Doug Swallow guy, which I do find that to be a peculiar name. But nevertheless, I mean, uh, I see. After a while, you lose your patience. I can't wait. I'm not going to wait the rest of my life for these people to get with it. You know, to get with the 20th century because it's almost over with. You know. I know what you mean, there, Neil. In fact, um, in fact, uh, one of those callers I called in a few minutes, uh, about a half hour ago. I was listening to him. He sounded like a real homophobic bastard to me. Yeah. Probably just got out of church. Yeah, sounds like a real prick. Probably just got off his knees. Okay, sir, have a great day. You too, Neil. Okay. Said he sounded like a real prick. Oh, by the way, this fan, thanks again to Maddie Bell and John Jarris because this fan works really great. But Bluff, of course, see, Bluff is not in that department. He's not really too technically oriented. So we didn't realize it's got, like, various speeds. So when he brought it in here last week when the air was out Thursday, whatever day, though, the air was just pishing from that fan. But now that you, like, crank it up, like, on, you don't even, if you put it on a high setting, it really blows in here, man. Doug Swallow might just lose it. He might lose control if he were in here with that thing on high setting. Man, you talk about heavy blowing. But I got it, like, on a second to high setting. And it, it makes a little uh, squeaky noise back there, but who cares? You can't hear it, can you? No. And it is blowing some heavy-duty, wonderful air in here. Thank God for those guys, because their air conditioning system sucks. The contractors that built this crap up here on the third floor, I'm going to tell you, if there is a God, he's going to make sure that you guys rot in hell, okay? You're going to be there a long, long time, burning in hell, paying for the job that you did up here, because it sucks. Heavy-duty, unadulterated, pure, 100% crap is what it is. And that guy that wrote the article, that the letter to Tom Jicka, I think you got a point, okay? I think you'd be having a point. The grammar sucks on this show. It's crude. It's rude. It's lewd. And too bad. Too bad for you, okay? And thanks for listening to 560 QAM, by the way, because I know you're listening right now. Probably squeezing it. Mornings will never be the same. Starting this Monday, it's those two wacky guys in the morning, Ron and Ron, from 6 to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday. Only on 560 WQAM. Join the NRA to your gun today. Have yourself some down home Christian fun. Blow your friends away. We'll back you all the way. Defending your right to own a gun. When you think of all the benefits you're getting, life will be sweeter when you pack your heater and carry a license to be deadly. Come on and join today. It's the American way to be a member of the NRA. Aim for the chest, as always, aim for the head, in case they're wearing a vest. Sharpen your skin, you'll be more fun, we'll be there to defend your right to hold the gun. Come on and join today, and you'll be proud to say you're a member of the NRA. Oh, 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 oh,
uh, they wanted to buy the uh, the property next to the Fountain Blue, they wouldn't sell it. So what they did was they built the Eden Rock and they built it higher so that they couldn't see the uh, right. that's, so that's the true. shadow. Right. There'll be a shadow right. over their uh, or their pool. Absolutely <laughs> correct, sir. Yeah, they did it intentionally to be aggravating, right? Exactly. You know that story? Yes, I do. Uh, what a great story. And that's why they hated it. Said, well, I wouldn't say it's a great story, but uh, yeah. Well, it's a great story because they, they, you know, you talk about arrogance where they didn't want to, the people at the pool to have have a son at a right. certain time. That's right. Oh, my God. Sounds like a bunch of real pricks to me. I think so. And I remember, and, uh, and uh, well, I don't remember, but my granddaddy came down in 1911. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. That'll be good. Well, here's another story. Okay. He worked for uh, he worked for Flagler, uh -huh. and he was a railroad man. And right. He went that down in sense, 1930, yeah. 32 or 36 uh -huh. to catch the guys that were down in the uh, in the uh, Keys, and they were they were working on the railroad, and they were uh, World War One veterans, and the the uh, the uh, uh, the railroad went down there, and uh, it caught the caught the guy the hurricane caught these guys. And what's incredible is the hurricane, and this is the hurricane season, and this is a great thing for everybody to remember. Yeah. This railroad was a big, heavy train, and it lifted. When the hurricane of 35 came through, it lifted the train so much yeah. that the, even the sawgrass wasn't disturbed. I'll be dang. Well, listen, thanks a lot. And the sawgrass, they're pretty disturbed in the sawgrass right now. 56705, what did he say? I was uh, taking a little nap. Five six seven oh five sixty something about Henry Flagler and about the dogs and pound five sixty on a mobile one line. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You got some of the wackiest callers, man. I usually listen to the sports station. I just happen to have it on here. This is a great freaking show, man. Yes, it is. It's the greatest freaking show in the history of mankind. You're right. Listen, I got one. I mean, you just found this show by accident, sir. Is that what you're saying? In spite of our great promotional department that we got. No, 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 no. I, I'm going to listen to it from here on out. I'm from New York, and I have been yet to find a great station down here. Oh, this, right. is this is unbelievable. Right. Anyway, listen, I got one thing to say. Well, first of all, I'd rather have a Haitian because I hate the smell of curry. Yeah. That That's number one. Yeah. And number two is I don't care if a football player takes it in the ass or he gets on his knees as long as he can sack a guy 15 times a year I throw for 4,000 yards. There you go. What he, do, what he does in his own time is his own There business. you go. Go, go LT. Oh, there you go. LT, okay. That's right. God bless you, sir. Let me, and and okay, say, hi, say hi to Marty Glickman. Get out of here. Go back to New York. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560. There's a guy of high principle, man. He don't give a crap if his ball players, but at least he's being honest, as opposed to most of you who lie through your teeth. He don't care if his athletes are all a bunch of criminals, if they're uh, whacking broads, if they're, uh, you know, doing uh, lines. He doesn't care what the hell they do, okay? As long as they can go out there and run fast and jump high like Brian Blades, that's all he cares about. Oh! At least he's honest enough to tell it that way, okay? As opposed to all you other goody two-shoes who are full of crap. 567, how's Shane Burton doing, by the way? He, uh, yeah, he's all straightened now. Where are we going? Here's a lady mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Lady Hello. Mo yes, ma'am. Hello. I just want to make a comment. Uh-huh. I just wanted to say that you're disgusting and repulsive and you're right. going straight to hell. Uh-huh. Thanks for listening to 560 QAM. <laughs> <laughs> Click. Okay, great. And I'll see you there, sweetheart. I'll see you there with bells on my nose and rings on my toes. I'm filthy and disgusting. I'm going straight to hell. But she's listening, and she'll continue listening if she's listening right now. In fact, you know that scene in the video I was telling you about, that Britney Spears video where she's reaching into her crotch? That's what she's doing right now. Better watch those sharp fingernails, sweetheart. 5670560, five, oh, five, pound 560 on a mobile one line. I'm disgusting and I'm grotesque, but rather than turning to a show that you might like, being the good religious person that you are, once again, thank you so much for making the effort. Unlike most of the people out there that won't even dial the seven digits, thank you for making the effort to dial the number and call in and express your displeasure and condemn me to burn in eternal hell. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for caring enough to send your very worst, like most people of your ilk. Most people of your mental frame of mind, as in crazier than a freaking bed bug. You crazy, uh, obnoxious bitch, you. Yeah, you're going to burn in hell. You're disgusting. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA, and uh, I don't understand. Well, what's your problem with guns? 
What, what does that mean? What's my problem with guns? Well, I mean, you why think do you kids ha- ought to be walking around with guns? You think irresponsible people ought to be walking around with guns? You think? No, 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 no. First of all, okay. no, listen. Just let me speak. You asked, no, you asked me a question. Didn't you ask me a question? Okay, but you're trying to put this into everybody's head, okay? It's put, put what in, oh, are you worried that I'm going to convert to mankind? I hate to break the news to you, sir. The overwhelming majority of people in this country are in favor of gun control and opposed to crazy gun suckers like you, sir. They're opposed to that. No, 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 no. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Go oh, read a I'm book, the... okay? Go read some stats, okay? Just call on the show and say, no, 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 no. That don't uh, convince anybody, okay? Don't confuse you with the facts. Is that what you're saying, sir? Uh-huh. Don't confuse you. I wouldn't waste my time trying to have a conversation with somebody like you. Go suck on a barrel of your gun and have a great day. 5670560 oh, on your friendly station and pound 560 on a mobile one line. A Hank Goldberg show from Shula's at 2. We got Donnie uh, B talking baseball. Marlins are red hot. No. Does anybody care? Orioles and Marlins. We got the interleague play this week. Anybody care? No. Joe Costello does. He wants free tickets. Here's a, a mobile in Oakland Park. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. You got both. The, you got the lady that tells you that she's going to, you're going to go to hell. And the no, no, no guy. Don't, why are they calling you? They love it. They love you. I, they, we all love you. That's why we call you. They couldn't turn it off if their lives depended on it, especially the bitch that called about how disgusting this is. I'm going to burn in hell. She's hanging on every minute, I guarantee you. She's got she, her corn cob out right now. Uh, Neil, you're the best. Yeah. I mean, I call you often. You're the best, and we love you. And here Every fire tonight. hydrant in this town is in danger for the next 60 minutes. Yeah, that is true. Because we she's love so you. emotional. We, we love you, Neil. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, you're terminal. Five six seven oh five sixty. We love you, Neil. Here's the food from our buddy Tony's. Thank you, Brad. You're a great American, and we'll eat all of it. Okay, Sam douchebag, don't have to eat one drop of it. In fact, he isn't allowed to eat any of it. In fact, you know what he can you eat? Got a couple Sam? singles. Yeah. Never mind. I got it. You got them. You can afford it. Okay. Well, I didn't know if I had with his single double with his double barreled uh, car bill of yours here, and you're asking me for a couple of singles. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. One thing about this little Cuban. Boy, does he have a lot of chutzpah. Yes. Yes. Five six seven oh five sixty. We're hearing from all the unhappy people today. Are there any happy people out there? No. Anybody that likes the way things are going in the world? No. Anybody that's got a life? Anybody that uh, you know doesn't have some kind of a complaint? See, they all got started with that thing with Tom Jicka. What, what am I going to do with them? Am I going to eat this? What is, no, what is Brad that? wants you to talk about them. Oh, Brad wants me to give them a plug. Well, of course we'll give them a plug. They're at one ninety three twenty nine Northwest Second Avenue. It's under ninety third and Second Avenue in Miami. Tony's uh, Cafe and Pizza. And we love Tony's. They got great pizza, and they got all kinds of side dishes and sandwiches and dinners, chicken parmesan and sausage and peppers and lasagna and all kinds of salads and cold sandwiches and hot sandwiches. They do great catering, and they got uh, all kinds of good stuff. And we love their pizza. All right, Brad. We, we, love, we do. We love your pizza, Brad. We, didn't I say that? Didn't I say that uh, Ponytail better be on the uh, best behavior because Tony's has given him a real run for his money? And I did say that, and I meant it. Not just because it was for free, because it was good. Because if it wasn't good, I'd be the first one to tell you. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. We got the you're gonna burn in hell crowd going strong today, and the NRA guy, which is you know all related, same same crowd. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hi, Neil. Hey, there's a great article in the, uh, yesterday's Sun Sentinel with a letter letter to the editor. It's about the negative negative negativity of uh, Reverend Robertson Farwell and Kennedy. Their intolerance uh, yeah. that breeds uh, and fosters prejudice, uh-huh. and uh, it ends with. Well, how, how can they make a good buck unless they can uh, foster some hate? Yeah. Unless they can have scapegoats. It ends with saying that hands that help are far better than lips that pray. Amen. <laughs> That's what Doug Swallow said. <laughs> okay, thanks for the good news, sir. Okay. Whatever you said. Okay, we got the pizza now from Tony's. I'm going to eat the crust too. You know, I don't give a crap. <gasps> what? Wow. Nothing. Too bad, okay? Oh my, you're all business. Okay. I'll guarantee you. I'll there. guarantee Defoe uh, has a has a massive uh, sum. I don't wish it on him. I wish him nothing but the best. Got to lose some weight, Defoe. You're gigantic. You're enormous. He's ballooning up. Boy, this is great pizza, you know? Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. With meatballs and uh, pepperoni. Mmm. Nice going, Brad. Excellent. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on a mobile one line. We got six hundred open lines. We got an hour to kill. I don't think we're going to have a Chinaman's chance of making it. I'm going to have to get into this awful story about this guy who went to Montreal to eat the uh, French fries. Why the hell would any person? And this is a guy from down here, so I guess that explains it. A lawyer, no less, Fred Robbins, who went to Montreal to check out their great French fries. 
in garlic mayonnaise sauce. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, by the way, did I ever tell you what they uh, put on their uh, French fries in Amsterdam? Just ask John Revolta. He'll tell you. Don't don't even say it. Don't get yourself started, okay? There are people who like it again because somebody told them that it was like a real, it had a cult following, and it was really a brilliant movie and yada, yada. And so they say, oh, yeah, that's great. That's really cool. 1256 at 560 QAM. You're all going to burn in hell. Just remember that right now. That's what they're telling us. We're all going to burn in hell and have a great time oh! being there, okay? Be with some, uh, I was going to say, living and breathing people. 5670560, pound 560 on the uh, mobile one line. How are we going to tell that story, by the way? Do I have to clean that up? Afterwards. I, I better not tell him. I don't want to get that. I don't want to alienate him, okay? He's a big fan of the show, okay? Maybe he'll uh, become rich and famous someday. Oh, he already is? Why would he think that that's a bad thing if you were telling that story? Apparently, he didn't think it was bad enough to tell at the dinner table. To tell Eddie Money? Yeah. Eddie uh, Mix? Tom Mix? Who the hell is Tom, Eddie uh, Money, Eddie Mix? Who is that? He, he's one of the guys. Oh, is he the one that does mixers. that mixing during the, uh, yeah? Eddie, Eddie Mix? Okay, so let me ask you. Does Doug Swallow and does Eddie Mix? Now, what does Don know? I don't, uh... No. Five. WQAM. Hi, can I speak to Neil? Speaking, sir. Neil. Yes. Um, I don't know if this was a rerun or if you got the chance to see it last week or not, but there was a program uh, with John Stossel on TV called The Power of Belief. Did you see that? No. It was excellent. It was an expose on all religions, really? cults, all this stuff, and all it basically said in the end is that all these people, they believe it, so to them it's real. What is the power of faith? There was a guy there that had a million dollars for anybody who can prove that any of this stuff is real, and mm -hmm. no one's taken him up on it. I mean, they had like all these people that could do this spiritual healing stuff and all this kind of stuff, and he exposed them to be nothing but a pile of crap. Right. Well, you might like to know. What, what was this on? Uh, I think maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm not what, like a, what channel was it on? What network? Uh, which one is John Stossel? Doesn't he do this uh, 60, uh, not 60 minutes? Um, 2020? I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah, either the 2020 thing, but I don't think it was that. It was like a special on just that with just him. I thought that maybe it was a rerun that had been on uh, like a, you know, a couple of months before, but it was called something like The Power of Belief. Great. I, got, I, I had, have to check that out. Yeah, they had the guy who, um, he used to be like a big magician. And he's kind of like doing like Houdini. He's going around and he's exposing all these people for fraud and all this stuff. And he's got an outstanding offer of a million dollars. Right. If anybody can prove that any of this faith healing or this, any of this new wave powers of healing and all this religion stuff, if anybody can actually prove any of it other than just by their strict faith alone, if they mm -hmm. can actually prove it to exist, he will pay them a million dollars and they prove that he even has the money sitting there Ready to give out? No takers. Yeah. No. Okay, thanks for the good news, pal. I'll check it out. Bye. Okay, maybe somebody knows uh, when that's on, going to be on again, or when it was on, or how I can get a hold of it. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. And see, it's just people like that bitch that called before about 10, 15 minutes ago when people ask me, well, why do you keep talking about this stuff? That's why. Because that's the kind of crap that it breeds. Intolerant, hateful, obnoxious people. That's why they're killing each other in Yugoslavia. That's why in India and Pakistan they're dry, you know, dropping the bombs on each other. That's why it's going on all over the world. And we have these simple-minded, idiotic people because somebody planted a seed of crap in their brain. They can't uh, smell the forest for the trees, okay? They can't smear it on their face. Oh, did I start telling that story? I'm not telling that story. See, That's the first time I heard it. You that. want to turn me against Enrique. First time you heard what? You never heard the Enrique say that. No. Yeah. I've never spoken to Enrique before. I've heard I've overheard women talking about that. About schmearing <laughs> on their face? Yes. Yeah. Has something to do with the enzymes and the protein. And they think it makes them look young? The enzymes eat all the dead skin and the proteins revitalizes the uh, How about if they schmear it on their rectum? What happens then? Maybe get rid of some of that cellulite. You think that might work? I got an idea. Let's start bottling it and selling it. Don't they already have that? Let's move on. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. I just happen to have my little jug over here. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Great. Uh, Neil, I have a question. I'm a stockbroker. 
uh, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Uh, this year I went to jail over a small financial matter. Uh-huh. And when I got there, uh, there was this, uh, this guy had to be almost seven feet, big black guy, uh-huh. standing at the cell, and they're taking me to the cell. And as they're walking me to the cell, the, the security guard there is smiling. I said, what's going on? I go, oh, we're taking you to the special cell. So when I get to the cell, and the big black guy says to me, hey, I won't skirt because it's a bad word, but he called me a mother whatever. Uh-huh. He goes, hey, mother whatever. Mother referee, you huh? Wanna, yeah, you want to be my, my wife or my husband? Okay, good. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. 567, did I just get through saying that? Give them again real slowly. Here's Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes. My name is Nancy, and I I have a question for you. Yes, Nancy. Um, how come you don't like Saiji from Boca? <laughs> Do you like him or not? Yeah, I love him. He's my best friend, as a matter of fact. We're having an affair, me and Veg. He's a great guy. Yeah. I work for him. You do what? I work for well, him. Let me ask you this. Do you think that maybe the reason that we don't like him on his show is because of what's happened here today? The fact that he called and I really didn't want to talk to him, and now all of a sudden you're the second person that he's put up to calling here and ask why I don't want to talk to him? you think that might have something to do with it, Nancy? Um. No. In other words, in other words, pain in the ass is the term that I'm hey, looking for. I'm trying hey, to be delicate. Too short. You let little things like that get to you. Oh, they they don't get to me at all. You know why? Because I just punch the button and move on. Oh, is she gone? I think she's gone. Poor Nancy, she's gone too. See, you wonder about what did I always tell you about chronic callers? Okay. They need help. Every single one of them. The chronic callers are the mental cases. Who in their right mind ever heard of, ever heard of a thing where because you don't want to talk to somebody, all of a sudden we got a campaign going on here now from people. And listen to the sound of her voice. She don't sound a day over 110, does she? She sound like no. maybe 125 on a good day. Yeah, but that's right. She would look a lot younger if you keep smearing it on her puss. And the, the worst part of that story you told me was that Greg Reed told the story. That's the worst part. Which Why is it bad? Oh, that's just not the kind of stuff. I mean, he's a, well, you know, you're right. In his case, what difference does it make? Well, who would you want to tell you that totally story? He's totally classless anyway. I don't know. Just the general manager of the radio station, that would be like running into the GM at it, like a swing club or something, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say We're the wrong thing there again? with you. Did I say the wrong thing again? Uh-huh. As usual? I don't know. I just don't think you, you got to have a little bit of respect for somebody you work for. And, of course, here we don't. But, I mean, how how do you get it when the boss is running around telling stories like that about smearing <laughs> on your face to look younger, you know? And, it's, and and I think he's probably the one that made it up. And then he, you notice how everything in this building gets attributed to Enrique. They have an Enrique fetish in this building. We got one guy in here who looks like Enrique. We got another guy that claims to be his best friend. We got a guy that bought his house. They're obsessed with him. And you want to know why? Because they're all jealous. Because Enrique is obsessed with me. That's why. They're all jealous. Let me wipe off my face and continue. Nine minutes after one at 560 WQAM. It's Just rub it. One feels nicer than lying on the beach rubbing suntan oil on your body. Lying on the beach rubbing suntan oil on someone else's body. That's why there's new oil of a lay. Hey, gee, Batty, you don't want to get sunburned. Let me put some lotion on those... <laughs> Hard to reach places. Oh, thanks, Freddy. How thoughtful. <laughs> Boy, that's a great thong you're wearing. <laughs> Freddy, are you getting excited? Yes, helping out with the suntan lotion's a great way to cop a cheap feel. That's why Oil of LA is formulated to be thin and runny. It comes right off. In just minutes, you'll have to apply more. Thanks again, Freddy. Oh, my pleasure. Boy, that's really a great song. <laughs> hey, how come when we sunbathe, you always lie on your stomach? Oil of a lay. 114 at 560 WQM. we got 200 open lines. 5670560. Oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a lady mobile in Boca. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Neil, I am a first-time caller. Great. I'm... You're not a friend of Veggie from Boca, are you? I don't even know him, and I live in Boca, so he's not too important. Thank God. Um, I'm a closet listener, uh-huh. and I know my husband's listening to me, and I'm probably going to be dead tonight for calling you, but I had to call and tell you I'm happy. Because you said, who is happy out there? I am so happy I can't stand this it. This is the most miserable goddamn place this town. There's more unhappy <laughs> people 
And not only are they unhappy, but they want to share it with the rest of us, You're too. right. You're right. I think we should just run them over and keep going. Uh-huh. Okay. I just want to tell you I'm happy. Okay. And I love your show. And have a great day. Thank you. Bye. There's a happy camper right there. Oh! Let's hear it for her, okay? 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Two calls left, and then we can go to the music, okay? And I can eat the rest of my lunch in peace. And we can work on that experiment. Here's uh, Parkland, Hope Sound, wherever this is. Hope Sound. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a girl that travels to Italy that wants to talk to you. Yeah. Hold on, here she is. <laughs> this Hello? Is amazing. This is like the 20th time we've uh, tried this. Yeah. Neil? Yes. Hold on, here she is. Uh-huh. She still ain't going to talk. Hello? Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Rogers. Well, first of all, yeah, I can tell you, I-95, it sucks. ASAP. Oh, Italy. And, and can I tell you, Italy is just absolutely gorgeous. You want to talk about Venice? You want to talk about uh, uh, Rome? <coughs> yeah. Oh, please. You know, please. Uh-huh. Not, that's where you want to go when you retire. Mm-hmm. Now, let's not even talk about, let's not even talk about that idiot that's called, uh, what's his name, in New York. He's ridiculous. Yeah. I can't even, let's not even go about politics <laughs> with them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not even talk about Hillary Clinton. No, God forbid. For, no. For, not running that bitch. For the, uh, the U.S. Senate. Right. I mean, really. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is getting ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, what did you start, about 9.30 this morning? No. On the uh, juice? But, but I, I want to bring O.J. up again, but what time did you hit the juice? Oh, O.J., let me tell you Yeah, there you go. Day. Let's hear about O.J. We have to We have to live in him in my neighborhood. Hello. He's going to Coral Springs. Yeah. Why did not he go back to freaking California? Exactly, Nobody where he freaking belongs, right. Let's friggin get on there. that story. Right. Because you know what? Nobody wants him in California. They want him in, uh, uh, now we got him in Florida. Yeah. Oh, please. Exactly, please. Well, listen, uh, have a couple pops more for us. <laughs> have a great day. Okay. That was beautiful. Well, see, she she couldn't handle the phone in the beginning. That's why he had a call, because she had one in each hand. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. On a Monday, no less, we got Grandma Boone today. We had uh, Doug swallowing it. And we got uh, Veggie from Boca and his uh, clan, his whole core. Wow. What the more could you want? Who says this isn't a fun place to live? Here's Parkland. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay, Long time sir. listener, first time caller. Great. Listen, i got to ask you a couple questions. You don't right? know Veggie from Boca, do you? No, I don't know. God, that. are you lucky. Okay. What a piece of crap he is. <laughs> i got a couple questions to ask you. I heard some rumors about the Ron and Ron show coming to uh, QAM in the morning. Monday morning, yeah. Oh, good. This coming yeah, Monday. Those guys. Uh-huh. And uh, could you play uh, the Chinese, Charlie the Chinese Chicken? Charlie the Chinese Chicken. Okay, well, we'll go find him. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. How are you, Neil? Great. Hey, about the Ron and Ron show, is it still both Rons? Like, remember that one Ron left the show? Yeah, he's coming back, Diaz. He got a face look. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, hey Neil. Or something like the- that. How about the bridge tender, man? Come on. Yeah, how about him? 5670560. Oh, you see how it works when these people have no more material? And we start with all requests, and I know that we're not going to play any of this crap. Pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Lake Worth. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Leaving finally tomorrow. Las Vegas for good. Yeah. Moving. Getting out of this hellhole. Yeah. And I'm happy as can be. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, not, I'm not drunk. I'm talking to you, and I can't wait to get out there and live there full time forever. You'll last about two months. No, I've been there. Oh yeah, you'll be broke in two months. I don't gamble. You don't gamble? Nope. Then why do you want to live there? I've been you out there. Like nice uh, humid air. It's taken me three years and eleven months. I got two houses out there, and I'm finally getting out of here. Got all my stuff sold, and I am. Well, but what is it that you like about there that you would want to live there? Well, down here it's not America anymore. Out there it's nice and peaceful. There are a lot of Mexicans running around out there. You better watch it. They all work. Yeah. A lot, lot better than here. Lots of Japs, too, by the way. Yes. Yeah, Lots been... of Japs. Millions. I know. No, I love it out there. Can't wait to get there. I'll be there in four days. Great. Right. Okay, we'll I'll see you in about two months. Up. Okay, good luck, buddy. He'll be back in two months. He don't gamble, but uh, you, he's going to Vegas. Five six seven. Oh, that's like saying I'm going to Century Village. I'm only 110, but I'm moving into Century Village. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. The the good juice must have come in on the weekend. I don't know about the the man himself. Oh, we got that big story on the front page. He's all bent out of shape. Where's that thing about? Oh yeah, he he was at uh, Star Wars. He was able to take his children to see Star Wars prequel at a local theater in the L.A. He signed about a hundred autographs. He says people were hugging me. They were very nice, except for one guy who yelled something, but he couldn't make out what it was. Like you're murdering son of a bitch. Like something like that. He couldn't make it out. hundred people asked him for autographs. They must have been listening to the Mandate Show on Friday. That must have been it. Uh-huh. About the autographs. God, you know, I love you, Mad Dog, but that was so freaking terminal. Did you hear that? Four hours about uh, guys getting autographs or asking for autographs from jocks. Oh, yeah, and so-and-so was great. He signed it, and so-and-so, he was a son of a bitch. Yeah, and, and four hours. Nice going, Mad Dog. Yeah. He's no fool. He knows that's the kind of thing that'll make the phone ring. Terminal calls. I mean, the worst, the end of the world. And he's on there going, oh, no guests on this show. No guests, just big teats, you know, but no guests on his show. He must have said teats like 600 times. Do you hear that? I love it. Here's a mobile in Pompano. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. The best show ever, I think. Don't you agree? What was that? This show. Your show today, the best show ever. Yeah, this was the all-time best, especially <laughs> Veggie and his two buddies. Especially uh, uh, yeah, especially the bottle lady. They started early, the bottle lady's on top of it. Yeah. OJ, as far as OJ, OJ goes, they had a thing on HBO, I don't know if you saw it, the lady that was in the uh, investigation said Nicole's head, when they told the back looked like a Pez dispenser. Yeah, that was last week, we talked about that. Oh, That's old news. Tell week. Sam to get out of there. Great show, Neil. A lot of material like the rest of the people Okay, today. see ya. Is that him? Is that Sam? Get out of there. We hate you. And if we want Enrique stories, we'll go to Greg Reed. We'll get the real story as opposed to all these other closeted stories that you manufacture for us, okay? We want the real story behind a story. We don't want this stuff that's you know, made, you know, he, he kind of fine-tunes and adjusted for my uh, benefit before he gives us the real story. You're not fooling us, Sam, okay? WQAM. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, Hollywood is a mobile. Okay, let's go to Hollywood on a mobile. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? How you doing, sir? I just want to tell you, today's show is great. This is coming from a former uh, listener of the Midday Guys, too. and I The Midday Guys? Get... You mean the Boogster? <laughs> that, big, that Boogster and that Christina Moron that ran out of town with a tail between her legs? Let me tell you something. Uh, when, you, when it first came on, and you know, I never heard of your show before, and I was like, what's going on here? And I have to say... Um, once admit when I'm wrong, and I was wrong. I yes, do sir. Enjoy your show. It's a big man to admit that he was full of crap. <laughs> seriously, I do you like are seriously show. full of crap. That's right. Now I, I like to listen to Hank or the Mad Dog once in a while for my little bit of sports, but I listen to you about daily issues that concern all of us. That's so right. It's, it's like flags like cool. at Disney World. That's the important stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like the hey, look, swallow. Who was the guy calling up before? I missed. I missed some of it. He's moving to Vegas, but he doesn't gamble. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. He li- he likes it because they speak English out there. Is what he said. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why, why doesn't he move? Why doesn't he move to Geneva, New York? They, uh, you know, they speak English there too. <laughs> what, what the hell does that mean? He's moving to Vegas because they speak English? That's that's one of the weirdest things I've heard. Wait till those Mexicans get a hold of his ass, man. <laughs> I hope they have a good time with it. All right. Have a great day, pal. Take it easy. See ya. Moving to Vegas. Well, like I said before, I love Vegas. Two or three days at a time, max. That's it. Three days max, top. That's it. But the idea of living in Las Vegas, I mean, yeah, if I had like $50 billion, but you know something, if you have $50 billion, what do you need to gamble for? You know what I'm saying? I mean, schleppers like us, we go to Vegas hoping to win a $6 million, and if we won a $6 million, would we move to Vegas? No. Of course not. What are you going to move it there for? You have to be out of your mind. Oh, but then you can go to the cheap buffets every day. Great. Isn't that great? That's what my life is all about, eating the cheap buffets. Maybe we could even get Fat Rich to steal the uh, the tickets off the other tables and stick it on our table to make it look like we paid for a meal that we just ripped off. We could take him along with us. But I don't think we could afford to feed him for more than two or three weeks. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Neil, sir. Yes, sir, speaking. First time caller, last time listening, you faggot. Okay, thanks. Uh-huh. He'll be, he's on there right now. He's stroking it. In fact, he's going to be uh, doing a facial in a second. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five on himself pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Great material, sir. How long have you been working on it, huh? Till it's raw, no doubt. Here's Coral Springs. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. I saw that special, The Power of Belief. 
it was on Thursday night instead of 2020, and uh, it was excellent. And what the man that called... The power of Christ compels you! Yeah. Absolutely. The, the man failed to tell you about the best part. Okay. First of all, they, they talked about these touch therapists. How they can, They're touching it, yeah. You know, they, they, they run their hands over people and heal them. A young, I girl did a, <laughs> yeah. a young girl did a science project where she asked these touch therapists to come in and stick their hands through a, a, a barrier. You know, there are two holes, left and right hand, and she would put her hand down, and they, and they would tell her which hand of hers they were touching. And in every case, they got it wrong. Correct them. Yeah. And the amazing thing is when ABC confronted people who went to these therapists and told them what had happened, they still didn't care. They still went to these people. Oh, yeah, people. that's right. And then, you know what it's like? It's like these phony psychic lines, like our friend Spoke Griffin from Power 96 has got going. She must be making about $30 million a year from that uh, right. crack crap she's running. But the most interesting thing... And more power thing, to her. The most interesting thing about it was that at the beginning of the show, they showed a researcher who brought in little kids, kindergarten-age kids, who had really no... You know, they were in their formative years. Yeah. And they put a box in the room, and they said to these kids, now, we're telling you a story, and there's a fox in the story. But there's no fox in that box. There's no, there's no fox there's in no the box? Than a fox. Yeah. Okay. And they left the room, and the kids would talk to each other. They would be paired up, and they would talk to each other and say, are you going to look in the box? And they'd say, no, I'm not going to look. There's a fox in there. And so the assistant comes back in and says, you know, there's nothing in the box. You can, you're can, you free to look in there because there's no fox in there. Yeah. But they had been given this this idea. Right. Which they formed a belief. They had a premature evaluation, box, right. And... Regardless of the fact that they showed them there was no fox in the box, they still thought there was a fox in the box. Yeah. So it's it's good thing they didn't young, have a bunch of Jewish kids in there telling there was locks in the box. Yeah. When we're tiny little kids, we yeah. form these these beliefs. So in other words, this is not something I'm going to be able to see again. Is that what you're telling me? I, I'm not sure. Damn it's it. Possible I could run it again, and it's also possible that uh, I know somebody that may have got it on tape. Please. I will research it. The one thing is the guy mentioned, the guy he talked about with the million dollars is James Randi. You know James Randi. The Amazing Randi. He did. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Fort Lauderdale. Right. And, and they didn't acknowledge that, but he was reading a letter from Fort Lauderdale. Oh, here's one from Fort Lauderdale. How about that? You know. But I, I, he used to be a magician and right. finally decided he was going to expose all the charlatans. I think he does good work myself. Okay, well, listen, try and find it for me. I'll certainly do that. Thanks. Bye-bye. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. How come? Father, could you help an old other boy? I'm a Catholic. No. Grow my extra wee wee. You only have one wee wee, son. Oh, mommy, am I deformed? No, no. You're you're only supposed to have one. Is Daddy deformed? No. He has two wee wees. No, son. He he only has one. Believe me, mommy knows. No, uh, he has two. Two? Yeah, a little one he pees with, and a great. Big one, he brushes the babysitter's teeth with. Okay, 132 at 560 WQAM. Have I got, well, I got a couple of things in the mail. What just happened to us all of a sudden? We never get this much mail in a month in this place. I'll tell you one thing. We used to get more mail at I oh. in one day than we get here like in a year, you know? Maybe it's the tough address. Or maybe it's just that uh, the sports nerd just can't spell the uh, name. Boy, look at, look at the way this thing is sealed up. Look at that. Maybe and, just somebody opened it. Huh? And retaped it. No, I don't think so. And isn't it ironic, I'll give it to you in a minute, in a letter too, isn't it ironic that I was just trying to think of Sean's last name a little while ago and his uh, uh, father, the dentist, in plantation? But, of course, the letter was sent from Evanston where he's going to school at Northwestern. So that's my close personal friend, Sean, who's a great guy, but even uh, maybe the most important of all. And what is this? We listen to your show from Freeport in the Bahamas. Yeah, and we enjoy your show. We thought you'd enjoy this pamphlet uh, that we hand out to religious people that bother us. Dear Believer, oh, this is great. This is great. It's a whole thing uh, debunking. This is beautiful. Thank you so much, Mon. This is fantastic. Yeah, Mon. Has it got an address where we can get I don't know, more of them? I'll hold on to that. Give them out at appearances and such. Cat, Catty uh, Meadows, I can't read this because it's some uh, Jamaican thing. Yeah, Mon. And there's some weed in here, too, by the way. And here's this long, long letter. Wow, look at that. With an article from the whole thing, I'll have to save that for after the show, put it close to my heart. Thank you, Sean. But the most important of all is my perverted, one of my many perverted listeners out there, sends me a list. Perfect timing. I bet you you can watch Doug swallow after he hears this. Hard. A list of Florida's glory holes. 
Now, now, what is this? I don't know. It says check out our Glory Holes website, and it's got a website on here. <laughs> oh, no. It says the heat you endure in your sunny state isn't anything compared to the Hot Times Metro experience in his latest trip to Florida. Metro himself is our company's kinkiest and most outrageous Glory Holes correspondent, and he's been to them all. Now he supplied all of the juice and gossip about Florida's hot holes. I bet she's got a good complexion. Remarkably, he uh, doesn't have that been there, done that attitude. However, he's very well versed in glory holes detection. And Metro is quite possibly the most preoccupied dude in America or the world when it comes to sniffing out glory holes on a regional basis. We don't know. There's just something about Metro. Read on and you'll be as hooked on the phenomenon as he is today. And it's got a whole list of all the glory holes in, well, maybe not all of them, but all the ones that he's discovered in Florida. Like the one here in the tea room that uh, somebody drilled with that pneumatic drill over the weekend while we were uh, out of town. Metro drove to northeastern Florida and right along U.S. Highway 231, just inside the Florida state line between Dothan, Alabama, and Mariana, Florida. There's a truck stop which has been abandoned and its busiest times are Thursday and Friday nights and all day Saturday. Park to the right side of the building and you're going to attract men like flies on paper, it says. They want you to them off in the worst way if you're a top man you'll find more than enough suckers who will take your they were so hot for our correspondent that he got more than enough action seven times in one evening it says good luck and it goes on this is even better than the uh those uh, cruising sites that we had last year remember that we got we got one better than that we got the glory holes baby we can even send tim russert's wife out to check some of these out and all you other straight assholes that never saw glory hole Yeah, it's just an eye looking back. Still never seen one. Like I said, it's just an, one eye looking back at you. I don't get out to those truck stops very often, though. Well, you ought to start. Here's a lady in Kendall. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Neil, did you read the Herald this morning on uh, Joan Fleshman's uh, column? Joan Fleshman? No. All right. If you were asking about Henry Burrow. About what? Henry Burrow. Oh, well, Henry Burrow, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's in there. You know what he's doing now? What is he doing? He is working for Gardner Stores, uh, for all four of them, as the new gig uh, wine sales consultant. Oh, he's he's doing the wine testing. <laughs> yeah, Henry does that very well. Uh -huh. He always well, he had a lot of practice. Well, he sure did. Especially if it was for free. Yeah, so it's there if you want to look at it. Okay, thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I also watched the Belmont. I was very disappointed. Um, I'm glad nobody got hurt, but I was disappointed because I wanted to see a Triple Crown winner. Right. And I thought that horse might do it. And um, oh, what else was I going to say? Well, one of the veterinarians said that he, in watching the tapes, he thought the injury might have happened at the top of the stretch, with it, which if it did, that would explain what happened. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of people, you know, screaming about the way Chris Antley rode the horse and he was too close <laughs> to the pace. I, I don't know about that. I mean, uh, you know, he seemed to be running comfortably uh, all the way around. Well, and yeah, then, uh, You know what, Neil? I did not like uh, a couple of the riders saying that to Ann Buffett. The trainer. Yeah. Uh, the idea was there was no speed in the race. The horse, uh, the horse comes from behind, really, yeah. and uh, there was no speed. So he was in the post position. He had nothing else. The horse, he let the horse go. He had to. Right. What's he going to do? Stand up and pull the horse? Exactly. So I mean, they're all wrong. I thought they were wrong. I'll tell you one thing. I, I've been going to the track for thirty some years now, almost forty years, and after after every race I've ever seen, everybody's an expert. Isn't that the truth, Neil? Yeah. But uh, I wanted to see it, and I was sorry that he didn't win it. And I thought I thought he rode a great race. Okay. Okay, Neil. Have a great day. Bye. And don't forget, if God would have wanted him to win the race, oh. it would have won a freaking race. Okay. Just keep that in mind. That's what Chris Antley said. If God would have wanted us to win today, we'd have won a goddamn race. Oh. That's what he said. And Charles C. Kenny looked him right in the eye and said, "F and A, sweetheart," which I thought was cute. Five, and she said, don't cry on national TV again, okay? It's not good for your image, Chris. And he said, okay. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. So we got the glory holes. I got a long, long, ponderous letter here about um, you ripping the crap out of you. Who is this from? This handwriting looks very familiar. Yeah, phony Mitchell Barron. This ain't from no Mitchell Barron. This is from one of our chronic uh, faxers. Chronic. Not only we got chronics out there, but we got chronics who will make up names. Just to try to try to hide the true identity of how full of crap that they are, okay? That's what we got. No lives. 
I and I changed what I said. The guy that's moving to Vegas, more power to you, sir. Maybe you're not really a gambler. Maybe it'll be paradise, or maybe you just find a paradise and get lucky with them. Speaking of gambling, your brains out. How about Hollywood Seminole Gaming, where people have been winning those big six-figure jackpots lately? You got to uh, be there to have a chance. We- Rogers got. OJ got away with murdering his woman and the white and Jewish friend. Now we hear him say he's thinking about moving to Miami where he thinks he'll blend in. Go back! Go back! Go back to hell where you belong. Go back! Go back! Go back to hell where you belong. Go back, OJ. We be going to a next call on Duke and Dolph Radio. Hey, come off the air, you murdering asshole. Ooh. What'd you say to me, you white motherfucker? I hear your ass. I'm just stabbing your white ass and wouldn't be the first time I got away with it. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, come off the air, you murdering asshole. Ooh. What'd you say to me, you white motherfucker? I'm just stabbing your white ass and wouldn't be the first time I got away with it. Go back. 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 Asshole. I'd like to thank everybody for welcoming me to that neighborhood. Yeah, welcome, OJ. It's uh, 143 at 5, 560 WQAM. This is unbelievable. Somebody faxes me this. Timothy Boomer. I wonder if he's related to Paul Boomer, remember? <laughs> From the crepitation contest. Timothy Boomer of Roseville, Michigan, goes on trial Monday for violating a 102-year-old Michigan law that bans cursing within earshot of women and children. Oh, look at that. I just mugged up a piece of sausage on the uh, fax. What? Okay. Boomer, 24, was canoeing with friends last August when his craft flipped and he was tossed into the Rifle River. Witnesses said he unleashed a string of obscenities. He was ticketed by a deputy who saw that a local canoeist was something in the same, uh, that's not easy to read, uh, in the same area with her husband and two small children. She was canoeing in the same area. If he's found guilty, Boomer could get 90 days in jail or a fine of up to $100, uh, 100 bucks. He's getting free legal advice from the ACLU, which claims the state is trying to criminalize speech that's heard every day on TV and in the movies, God damn it. How do you like that? Paul Boomer, all he did was <laughs> cut a bad one in the judge's face. Wait, uh, this, you're not ready for this. Just slicing you a big ass. Page after page, and and again, it's the same chronic handwriting from a chronic long time. I mean, like some kind, some kind of a moron. You can put any name in the world on here. In addition to which, take a look at that. The first name has been changed. Okay, it was like whited out, and they decided on a different name. Yeah, that's not too much of a giveaway, is it? That you had to like retrace the name, the first name, and the second name. Now I see too, because they weren't quite too sure what it was the first time. Ripping and ripping and ripping and shredding and tearing poor Georgian ass, okay? Probably some Israeli. Probably, you're right, probably some Boy. Israeli bastard, okay, that wants to go over there and knock the Arabs into the sea. Not a bad idea while you're at it. So did we ever figure out what we call the Indians and Pakistanis, besides cab drivers? 5670560. Oh, I guarantee you, man, those Pakistanis, they can drive a mean cab up there in Toronto. They can drive my cab oh. any day of the week. With all due respect to our Haitian friends. Do we have any Haitian friends? No. No. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a call from Orlando. Probably knows Doug Swallow. Hello. Orlando. 17 minutes, 51 seconds on their dime, and they <laughs> crapped out. How do you like that? Probably giving a facial to Doug. Here's a Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Hello. Faggot. Okay, thank you. Oh, that was Doug. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, we are on, Neil? Sounds like you, yeah. Yes, how are you? Okay. Okay, you're sounding now. Often you speak about God, you know? You speak about him all the time. Neil, God! Yeah. Yes, and you you know, you keep saying that everybody in South Florida is brain dead. Yeah. Well, finally, you got a guy that's not brain dead because sometimes somebody even pays me to talk, believe it or not. No, I don't believe it. Yeah, I believe it. No. Now, let me ask Can't you a question. Can't believe it. Now, there's no God... How could you be making the kind of money you're making? Yeah. How could you be doing a show that you have? Yeah. And how could you have that great voice? You know, uh-huh. you've got a voice that can go for four hours yeah. uh, oh. stop. You know that? God. I thought, I thought, the, drunk, I thought the drunk God bitch, I thought she was bad. And for the talking. Yeah. Now, let me ask you another question. Well, question. what's the point, sir? Right, what's my pseudo-intellectual this. friend? The what's point the point? Is this. Let me tell you something. If you were in another state, Believe yeah. it or not, if you were in another state, you would probably be in jail. Do you yeah. know that? No. Because the world doesn't have to know 
what glory holes is. Now, yeah. I did a little survey. Uh-huh. I did a little survey. Are you, I know. are you the guy that did the survey on the Never glory hole? Never mind. Let me finish. Please. No, let, let, come uh, on. Come uh, on. I do this. Yeah, you, I do this. Yeah, you do it. You put people to sleep, okay? This guy must be Bert Tannen's brother. He's a hypnotist. I do this. This is probably one of the guys from SRF. This is probably Jerry Mark's brother, a Marky. Jack Mark, whatever the asshole's name is over there. Oh, and you know that other guy? Oh, I don't want to get into that yet. I'll wait till Wednesday. The other one? He used to work at that place? 5670560. Oh, I mean, this has been great. We've had more people today doing Al Kelly. Regime. Bop, 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 bop. Have they said anything? No. The goddamn thing yet? No. No. I, the, let me do this. I, this guy wants he wants to do a sit-down comedy routine, Okay. Get your own show, you jackass. Speaking of that, let's get rid of Dave the Cop. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Good. You know, perfect segue with that last guy and some of the callers. Uh, let me just read you something real quick. It's real short, okay? Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Says, I've, always, time you want, I've always tried to show that the devil we blame our atrocities on is really just each one of us. So don't expect the end of the world to come one day out of the blue. It's been happening every day for a long time. Also goes on to say, if a kid is old enough to drive a car or buy a gun, isn't he old enough to be held personally responsible for what he does with that car or gun? You get a chance read the recent Rolling Stones article on uh, Marilyn Manson. Yeah. Two pages. I thought the guy was a putz. This guy speaks the truth, and he knows what he's talking about. He hits every nerve that you've been hitting, if, and uh, unbelievable. He holds no prisoners on all this, and uh, it's amazing. He's right on the money with all this, just like you're talking about, with all these hypocrites and all this nonsense that goes on in this country. Right. Uh, wonderful article. Okay. And aside from that, Cardinals still suck. They do, you're right. Have a good one. Okay. Right, Dave the Cop, who's obsessed with that St. Louis crap, man, he just can't cut the cord. He can't uh, slice it. Yeah, that guy was beautiful. And if, if we were to pick one call today that was the best call today, this would be tough. This would be difficult. There have been so many. I mean, each one. And I personally uh, favored Doug Swallow. Huh? The drunken lady was good, and the double-talking guy was good. But uh, Doug Swallow, it's hard to top that. Oh, it's not? 5670560. Oh, and then the guy that called before that was giving himself the facial, he was pretty good. Don't forget the lady that was uh, sending you to hell. And then, then the, uh, the short and sweet, right? You're disgusting and you're going to burn it hell. And I love it. Keep it up. That bitch. Here's a mobile in Oakland Park. Hello. Oakland Park. Okay, like I said, short but sweet. <laughs> that was good. But let me tell you something, guy. Was yeah. Don Sherwood from SRF? Who well, what did I just tell you? What yeah. did I tell you? I knew. Boy, am I sharp today or what? Yeah. Yes, sharp as a matzo ball, man. Called I'm 500 on top times of trying to get a uh, little cross talk. Yeah, oh, yeah. This show. is the guy who thought I was going to uh, promote that piece of crap, which, by the way, Craig Worthing is stuck on there, which more power to him. He's the only real broadcaster on that make believe radio station, and he's uh, desperate. You know, he needed a job. But other than that, I mean, the, this guy who keeps calling here and trying to uh, get us to put him on the air because he knows that nobody's listening on that uh, piece of crap. What is it, like 1790 off the end of your dial or something like that? If you keep, if you turn your dial all the way to your right, your AM dial, and then keep twisting it like another 200 kilocycles, maybe you'll pick up this goddamn station, okay, that this uh, Sherwood in the forest is in? Piece of crap. You idiot. You discuss. Hey, I do this. I do this. Yeah, right. So did Georgie Jessel. Well, he's been dead for 30 years, okay, you jackass. Man, I think it's time for me to calm down with a nice big stogie in my puss is what it's time for me to do from our friends at Nick's. 